Daily Gun Show. Come be live every weeknight at midnight Eastern, and we talk about guns for an hour. Uh, this is a panel discussion. If you want links? Store on the gunchannels.com uh, community. Built for conversations like this one. Uh, we're using the uh, YouTube platform as our tool to distribute the show. So we're watching the comments that are coming in from the people joining us live on gunchannels.com and over on YouTube. So uh, be part of the show. Everything we do online is an effort in this new media and interactive communication. So uh, it's Friday. It's episode 855. Each day of the week, we focus on a different uh, thing on the show since we're live every day. And uh, Fridays, we look back at the week. We'll go over to gunchannels.com, that community we mentioned. And one of the tools that's over there, one of the few tools that are over there, uh, is the uh, main news feed. So as people throughout the week post things on their individual channels or uh, anywhere on the site, really, uh, most of it gets distributed on the main news feed, so it can be uh, checked out by everybody. So we're going to, uh, on Fridays, dig through there. But before we do, or as I do, we'll say hello to everybody who's been joining us here. Looks like a bunch of people joined from uh, Gizzard's show earlier, so uh, Clover was the first one to jump in. Thanks for joining us tonight from Texas. Well, thanks for the invite. Good to be here. You bet. Thanks. Then we got uh, Snob's wife jumping in from Oklahoma. Thanks for joining. Thanks for the invite. You bet. Uh, then everybody jumped in here in the last minute, so I'm guessing y'all were in Gary's show. Uh, Patriot jumped in from Michigan. Thanks for joining. Thanks for the invite. Appreciate it. Yep. Snob jumping in uh, from Oklahoma as well, we assume. Thanks for joining. Thanks for having me. And then Gizzard jumping in from Kansas. Thanks for joining. Thank you for the invite, sir. And I'm scrolling back on my screen here. Throughout the week, we're back to Tuesday already. But uh, as I scroll back, anything that happened throughout the week, anything to start the show off with as far as a looking back at the weekend, Second Amendment, weekend guns? Well, obviously, it was every second matters. So there's quite a few things related to that, I'm sure. It's true. It was on the day before 4th of July, so kind of a holiday week. I don't know if people have time off before 4th of July. If anything, people are scurrying, right, to get stuff finished so they can have their time off for the 4th of July. But I think, yeah, there was a couple of shows actually focused on it a little bit at least. Yep, kind of had a double whammy this week. Had uh, every second matters, and then Fourth of July. So, uh, a lot of different content and things out there this week. So, what day was Saturday? Was oh, I have to go backwards. Saturday was 29th. So, I think we're back on Saturday. So, it looks like uh, Dead Horse had his uh, reloading chat on uh, Saturday. And that was only up till Rick's uh, show. No, wait. Was this a long one or was this up to Rick's show? It was a two-hour one. So Rick had his show last weekend. Uh, but uh, Dead Horse does these uh, live chats uh, to replace uh, Caliber Corner, which have been pretty successful. A lot of people showing up and sharing reloading knowledge. A couple of people joining up on gun channels. I don't think everybody sees those. You might see when somebody changes their cover photo, but I don't know if everybody gets the alert when somebody joins like that. Uh, looks like Snob had a show on Saturday. PBR had posted something uh, about this. Um, actually, this is from Warrior Poet. I don't know, does anybody watch Warrior Poet Society's videos? I have no, in years past, but not recently. Yeah, very, very rarely, but I do. Um, this one, I think, if it's the one I'm thinking about, 
He's uh, ranting in the car with his friend uh, about, yeah, they're just ranting in the car about this guy saying that uh, there's a need to shun them or to make fun of them instead of letting the media immortalize them or inf make them infamous uh, to make fun of them so that there's less incentive. What's the idea there? Do you guys think that's a valid philosophy of like when somebody does something inept and violent and horrible to lampoon them so that not only are they not famous or infamous at all, but also I guess the idea is to prevent others from wanting to follow their path because you're making them look like such an idiot. I think that was the gist of that video if anybody watched it. Well, it kind of depends on maybe the severity of what's going on. I mean, you got to be real careful because sometimes, you know, bad attention is still attention. That's it. All right, we'll move on. Then we had uh, David, who just took off. Uh, uh, was hanging out in some of the other chats earlier today. Uh, did a uh, mail call from uh, Patriot. Nice looking patch. Is that what he got? I'm looking through here. Looks like he got a bunch of stickers. Oh, no, this is you doing a mail call or him? He's doing a blind mail call. Is that what it yeah, is? that's okay. what it is. Yeah. Right on. It was a pretty good one. You should watch it. <laughs> There's no way to figure out the bacon pancake one because there is no top and bottom really to that one. I well, just threw it, it there. Just to decide what it was. I mean, he had he was trying to guess. He threw a bunch of extra stuff in there so that he could uh, guess and see what you know what stickers were and you know just what they were, let alone what orientation. But I must say, my daughter laughed and laughed. She loved that video. Um, right on. I was just say I, I would think I would know what most of them are, but that's ridiculous because that's that's there's no, no way. Once you're actually taken out sight, it would be. Uh, I mean, some of them I guess would be pretty easy, but others it would be pretty tough to assume we're going to remember all the orientations and stuff. Was that uh, bacon pancakes one? Was that a vinyl patch or was that sewn? That was vinyl, wasn't it? It's PVC, yeah. A PVC, yeah. The the sewn ones would be about impossible unless you knew the size of them or the outline. I mean, you can, like, if there's, like, the every second matters, you can feel the, like, yeah. whatever they call, there's a name for that, like, kind of Passion. old, like, uh, sewing pattern, where, like, oh. something that's really highly detailed, yeah, it would just feel like bumps, right? It wouldn't feel like anything. But, like, yeah. if it's just, like, a long, deliberate, I'm trying to look at something that's just, like, like the G, for example, like, that one, it wouldn't have anything on there but one texture. Like, that one would be okay, no matter if it's sewn, right? Like brace this. That one's not too tough. It's just some letters, and there's no no extra stuff going on. If anyone wants to check that out, you can check out my channel. I have I have several unboxings from GearWebsites.com. Free patch Friday. I don't know, another way they could check it out is just buy a bunch of stuff from GearWebsites.com. Yeah. Yeah. Just experience it for themselves. They can have their own yeah. blind challenge, right? In the very own home. <laughs> yeah. Close your, close your eyes when you're ordering. Just start clicking. That's the fun. <laughs> <Just part. click. laughs> start clicking until your wife starts smiling. <laughs> When your wife starts yelling, you know you clicked enough, and then uh, there you go. Send or you know complete order, and then, then yeah. you, get the, you get the credit card. But you get the PayPal statement at the end of the month. What the hell? <laughs> what did I buy from your websites? Yeah, one hundred fifty-three dollars this month <laughs> for a bayonet. <laughs> what? Yeah, four bayonets. Honey, honey, I can explain. <laughs> honey, I can explain. It was on the set of Red Dawn. There's only one. You know. Yeah. <laughs> It's autographed. If there was bayonets from the set of Red Dawn, good. If there was bayonets from the Red Dawn, and I owned them, those are probably. Oh. Sell, but I don't think there are. Uh, all right. So Bishop's posted. Is this something new from Marlin or something old from Marlin? Looks like an old. I don't know. I can't ever. I can't ever see what oh, yeah. they post. Holy crap! Live. Okay, let's uh, adjust well, it for inflation. Let's see what it would be worth now. Okay. I'm almost always they're all about the same, right? So like they have a uh, lever action thirty thirty for thirty eight bucks, and a lever action thirty thirty up to forty two bucks. I figure that's probably about three hundred bucks today. I'll bet you if you did the math from uh, nineteen forty five. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna five hundred twenty six dollars for the thirty eight dollars. 
Yeah, okay. Today, today would be 526. Yeah, it says with that's, a about what a, yeah. that's about what a Marlin 3030 would cost you today, right? Somewhere yeah, in there. I think you can get them yeah. for under four. Oh, right yeah, there. yeah. Walmart has them at three, almost 398, 375 for just a very oh. basic one. Yeah. Unless you're in New Mexico. Mexico. Yeah. They got rid of them in New Mexico today. Lever actions from Walmart? All Not until the 22nd. Yeah. Oh, okay. All guns in Walmart after the 22nd, though. Oh, geez. Uh, in, New, in New Mexico. Sorry, in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. All right, so then Gizzard had his uh, early bird, leftover chicken and waffles on Sunday. Is that a good show? Uh, usually, I mean, I enjoy it. Yeah, it's a good show. We had a lot of people in there. Gizzard's like, I wasn't even there. Why are you asking me? Like, are you asking I was me? there. Like, it's a good show. Usually I hear good things. <laughs> We've got Travis doing something about 18,000 subs. Is that on YouTube? Yep. I wanted to give a little update about all the firearms I got in the stable that I need to take out to the range this summer yet. So I got a heads up on what's coming down the pipe. He's doing his little YouTube flex on us right there. <laughs> Actually, it's more of a response to people bitching about my food videos, but yeah, okay. <laughs> um, we got a dead horse doing this thing about the machine that made everything. Anybody watch this one? Oh, I've not seen that. I think I missed that one. It's pretty cool. This place called MT is a YouTube channel that talks about nerd stuff machines and whatnot so this is some i think it's in france some machine in some museum in france and it is basically the first like mechanical lathe so uh i mean there's a technical term for the type of lathe but basically the first time they decided to do what they were doing up until then with wood and it was kind of sloppy because it was with wood uh, to start doing all that with metal but I guess not the first time ever because they had done it with small little tiny screws and stuff for clocks but this is the first time somebody decided to make basically a large enough machine that could actually make stuff like screws and shafts and gears and all the stuff you need to make real machines. So in a lot of ways, that was the machine that started making other machines that then you know, fueled the Industrial Revolution and, and innovation and all that kind of stuff. So it was kind of neat. And it's always neat to hear some nerd talk about you know something like that that they're super passionate and know the history of. Uh, and then, because otherwise it just kind of looks sort of like an old printing press, an old sewing machine or loom or something. It just kind of looks like a bunch of stuff, like an old table or something weird. So we got their um, conspiracy chat. I don't think I jumped in this week. I don't think anybody else was in there either. Matt and uh, Jedi were in there. Got uh, Yoder does his come and talk it show out of uh, Texas. A syndicated radio show. He posts that each week. You can listen to it from the link there. Uh, they're the show that helped Matt out with his 2A rally in Texas years ago. Got a couple of people posting pictures. Uh, Rich posted his Sunday show. Was there a gun gals on Sunday? And technically, no, I guess, but they did it on uh, That Guy's Wife Media channel. It was the oh. same time slot. We just did it on her channel. Oh, okay. I didn't see it. So, um, you guys were on location, or were you already home by then? Nah, um, we were home. Yeah. Oh, so this is you posting it here. I thought this was a video that you guys posted because of the whole thing. I figured this was just like a, pro a what do you call it, produced video that was posted. Yeah, no, she thumbnailed it, apparently. So, that was the show, then, the the stand-in for gun gals right just talking about the weekend yeah and then pancakes isn't doing a show anymore he's hate gun he hates guns and doesn't like second amendment very much he's gonna start working against it so uh, dead horse took sunday show and did a show uh then honda did something i'll put a couple of videos on this micro center which turns out it is the same company as the place in ohio that hosh had done a, a walkthrough of so it's a pretty impressive uh, kind of surplus and used and refurbished electronics and computer store. It's pretty neat. You know, from a content creator perspective, too, if you've, if you've never built your own PC before, I mean, man, you can save so much money if you go that route. Plus, it's easy to upgrade and, you know, man, that's, yeah, that's definitely the way to do it. Have a store like that nearby. Yeah, seriously, he lives, I don't know if he lives there. I think that store was in Colorado Springs, so it's got mm -hmm. Force Academy and NORAD. 
and then tons of defense distributors and some other stuff you know a bunch of government and industrial complex stuff or military industrial complex stuff so i, I imagine like they're they, they must have the potential to get just tons of computers right potentially some really mm -hmm. neat stuff and just other neat stuff so yeah that, that would be a cool place to hang out but you're right about making a computer um i think there's something if no one's ever made a computer before like a desktop putting one together certainly easy enough with help and with videos online right oh yeah and then with all the resources there are online but then it's the best way to know what all the parts are right so it's mm -hmm. unlike a car where you just kind of can conceptualize you can literally pick everything up stick it together clamp it on and then you just know your computer much more intimately, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, left to right, if you've ever built a computer by yourself, Clover. You ever built a computer? <laughs> yeah, of course. Is it? <laughs> I've never built one. I've worked on one and taken parts out and stuff, but I've never done the whole thing. No. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we're going to count that or not. Patriot? I've broke a lot of computers, but yeah, I've, I've swapped out a lot of parts, but nothing from a shell. Uh, it's not the wife? No, not even close. It's not the wife's husband? What's a computer? <laughs> <laughs> and then Travis, you've done it? Yeah, I'm on my third right now in about the last 10 years. That's interesting. So, um, you know, if you would have, if we would have had this conversation that rewind 10, 15 years ago when mm -hmm. we started having conversations like this, I would think it would have been like, yes, 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 right? Like everyone was a nerd. Everybody was only even there at that time because you figured out how to get there, right? Like now it's a little different and there's no need to know all that stuff. And I don't think it's, I don't know, it's not a necessary skill to have, right? Like back in the day, I think there was probably a value in having an A plus if you could get one. Uh, a plus is the Microsoft certification to put a computer together. Just meant you went through some kind of an established class to make sure you learned every piece. So you weren't forgetting something. And uh, I think that was worth getting because you could get that kind of class on the cheap, uh, sometimes even for free, depending on what was going yeah. on. Net Net plus was pretty cool too. Like uh, networking, how to connect computers together. Type yeah, of. Net plus was the companion. The I guess like the step up or whatever from A plus, and then the the big dog was uh, MCSE, uh, but MCSE requires you know college time and stuff. Cost me about seventeen grand for MCSE. Oh, <laughs> right. That's where you're going in as a profession. But an A plus yeah. you can do in like a yeah. weekend or like a, a after school type or yeah. an after work kind of. Yeah, class it's a basically you can study and challenge the test more or less. Is how you, is how it works more than anything. Just get you some study guides and stuff and go in and challenge but yeah M mcse requires class time and lab and some other stuff so it's actually a uh usually not college or you know it's a it's a certification program so it's not like you're getting a diploma or anything but no, um, no, yeah it, it does there's time there's yeah. time and money involved so for me i needed it for some contracts and different things was was my thing it's like a cpa or a lawyer it's it's not that well, it is. It's an accreditation, right? It's a certification so yeah. that, that way you prove through us. A, a a, but anyway, that was for career people. We're talking just in general. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you can get your basically equivalent of an A-plus by watching enough YouTube videos today. Now, I don't pay attention to that kind of stuff, but there must be better YouTube videos for that kind of thing. So that could be a potential project for somebody who's aware, but... Uh, you know, doesn't have the time or interest to actually put the videos together, you could probably go find a bunch of decent videos, take an afternoon, find a bunch of decent videos, and then offer those to everybody else who's like, you know, I'd like to build a computer, but I just don't know where to start, and give them a playlist or something that gives them an idea of where to start. But speaking of where to start, I get paid big bucks to pause here and show this gun off for a long time. So what's going on with this gun? Um, the check's in the mail. It may bounce, but don't worry about that. Uh, yeah, that's the first gun I ever received to review that I didn't have to buy myself. My and concern is I don't see like grip zone anywhere on here. Like how many well, times you just picked it up wrong and almost hurt yourself? I almost shot myself with it the first time. Well, see this red? See the red on the trigger? That mm -hmm. saved me though. The red on the trigger because it let me know it was cocked. Is that what that is? It goes forward and then red is an indicator of some sort? Yeah, red's an indicator the striker's back. 
Because you can't tell just because the trigger's back, you know, like normal. I'm still confused about that. But no, it's a really good shooting little gun. I was very surprised with it. And it balances on a stump pretty good, it looks it like. It does. That's a that's a fence post, corner post. So now Honda's not... Oh, this is some sort of thing. I was going to say, I don't know if this video game thing is, but it looks like that's from uh, the Micro Center also. Uh, then we got Sand Hills posting this thing. Um, oh, I shouldn't have clicked on that. Uh, let's see, the hot dog sandwich thing, whether or not cereal is a soup. I don't think it goes back to the old place, does it? Dang it, i got to search back again. I just remember to right-click. We've been got, we've already gone through everything pertinent. We can just skip everybody else. Just go back to that SAR thing, hit that one more time real quick. and then Yeah, yeah, we can do that. I know Travis was up next with comparing, like, I don't know, an apple and an orange or something. <laughs> no, it's a shield and EC9S. Sorry, I got a little post crazy this week. I've just been kind of sitting around putting a lot of stuff up, but. That uh, that SAR, so that doesn't have any other loaded chamber indicator or anything else on it at all. Um, it does it have a little cutout window? I haven't had a chance to watch your video. Does it have a little cutout window so you can see if it's loaded or not? Just by nope, it does no. not. Oh, really? Well, I can. I mean, I can see what you're saying with that little red indicator because, like, on the SD9VE, whether it's cocked or not, the trigger's in the same place. Unlike a well, this one's not back, but yeah, this, this one's all the way back. There's really oh, so no. You can, so you can tell. You can yeah, tell. You yeah, so easily tell. Yeah, 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 but they still put the red there as like an extra. I guess. Okay, okay. Well, it could be, it could be importation. Yeah, it could be an importation thing too. I don't know about importation, but I bet you it's a state compliance thing. Like there might be one or two states that say there has to be an indicator for being because I know California they had to add that little red thing around the striker dimple thingy that comes well, back. Yeah, and yeah. I noticed the Canic has that. Yeah, it's it's like, it's it might be thing. something like that. Like maybe that, you know, satisfy something. I don't know. Or they're trying to be different. I just think it's cool. So yeah. what's your uh, video here comparing the shield and the Ruger? Yeah, you see 9S. Oh, you mean, Travis, you're still a gun channel? I really thought it was apples and oranges because I didn't think you were a gun channel anymore with all those food videos. No, about 80% of my content's gun related. So, yeah. <laughs> you're laughing all the way to the bank. He'll be making food videos, too. <laughs> No, I just got bored. I'm like, I'm eating this burrito. Let's turn the camera on and talk about it. I mean, Food Channel seemed to do pretty good, you know? <laughs> I think there's something to it. I mean, it keeps you interested in doing what you're doing, right? It lets you play around a little bit. If you're going to play with the software a little bit, you don't have to waste it on a good video, right? But then if you put something up there, like about your dog or about your car or something, and somebody else finds that, that's outreach, right? Like, they're yeah. like, oh, that's a funny soup video. Oh, wait a minute, this guy's into guns. I never thought those, these people were any good. Hopefully. Yeah, my uh, my number one viewed video on my channel is, it's uh, two things to look for when you're buying a Jeep Cherokee. I never yeah. intended that video to do anything. That was a little five-minute video I shot outside before meeting I was going into. I was just, yeah, let's film and talk about it. And that one's got the most views out of every video I've done. Well, let's... Yeah. Take a little notepad, a uh, post-it note, and stick it there because we're about to touch on that one here in a bit. So I don't want to forget that one. But All right, cool. A couple of Patriots things here. Um, probably because of the 4th of July. He's posting all these patriotic things because he's Patriot in the dark and whatnot. Um, I'm not going to read that one because it's too long and that much freedom is too much to read. But I'll read this one to it's shorter. Uh, in Congress, July 4th, 1776, the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America when, in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another. And then it goes on to say, F off, England. Paraphrasing. <laughs> then we got Early Watch. Uh, Dead Horse was able to post Early Watch a couple of days this week. Had some stuff going on, so he didn't post them every day. Uh, then he posted this thing about the White House petitions. So if he was here, he could try to explain himself on why he's posting a White House petitions thing. But anybody think White House petitions are worth attention? Anyone have a problem with them or is anybody championing them? I think they're more, usually I think they're more confirmation bias on their part when they put them out. So, I mean, assuming that, um, you can get enough people with an opposing viewpoint that their opinions or their, you know, what they want to do is 
not confirmed, then uh, it could be. But I think that's a lot of that would take a lot of people. And from my digging into when we had the comment period and, and some of the other things that I've been involved in as far as getting people to, to write in or sign a petition or sign up or do this or do that, I, not nearly enough people do it, unfortunately. Well, 304,000 people said to repeal the NFA, I just saw. Yeah, but that was a couple of years ago. Uh, that was, will it tell us? Uh, that was a while back. 2017, created by AZ on January, July, January 20th of 17. And, uh, well, it overshot the thing by 300%, right? So 300,000, it only needs 100. Ideally, what it says here, you know, idea Obama crafted this, so Nobel Prize winning president crafted this, so it's pretty perfect. You create the petition, just gather the signatures. Once you got a hundred thousand signatures in thirty days, you'll get an official update from the White House within sixty days. So it's perfect. Um, they hit it to three hundred thousand, and then of course, the official update from the White House within sixty days was to put it over here. So that you don't get a lot, but on the other hand, like this one has 93,000, or no, no, excuse me, excuse me, it needs 93,000, it has 6,000. Uh, I think they go for 30 days, so it's got until July 27th, it's only days old, but my fear is if these sit there and do nothing, is that some sort of an indicator? Does someone on the other side consider that an opportunity to come get us because we're not interested? So, you know, if these things were like everybody could was just all working together and then like without thinking about it every week, we added another one of these and we just hit it with a hundred thousand like as practice, you know, just like going out and shooting 22 bolt actions just to do it, you know, just just because we all can like we all just hit this signature, whatever the new petition is every week or every month then I could see it being active. But when it just is every once in a while, and it's really just almost a popularity thing, like who can get enough people that have enough reach to get these the word out on these things? Because it's who would disagree that the government needs to recognize our right to bear arms? I mean, that's just a no-brainer. So the fact that this one drops dead is that an indication that somebody doesn't know how to get the word out or that people aren't interested. And my fear is that some politicians going to think this is an indication that we're not interested when more than likely probably people just didn't even know it was happening, right? Yeah. But it goes to you. Anybody have anything else to say about this one? We had one under Lake Erie last week. Oh, probably an earthquake. Would that be a water quake if it happens underneath of a lake? Well, What's did you see An Angelina posted a video of a water quake, of the water quake earlier. She was posting a video of her pool, like, about the overflowing its sides. Dude, that's yeah. crazy, man. And yeah, apparently like, they had, like, a seven point something today. Oh, there was so another earthquake today? Yeah, yeah, just did like a little bit ago. That's what she, she came in Gary's chat. That's what we were late for. We were listening to her talk about the earthquake. That just happened. Isn't that seven right because of the politicians? Isn't that the California's problem? Serve them right. But John, the way he's supposed to do that. They can move. Oh, we got a lobby, then we got uh, Patriots and. Your love, your love of liberty, your respect for the laws, your habits of industry, and your practice of the moral and religious obligations are the strongest claims to the national and individual happiness. A pew pew and the new jet, uh, icon, I guess. That horse doing one of the creepy off airs. I guess they had a volleyball in there. Then, uh, Honoree, he was out there earlier. I don't know if he's out there now. Had uh, fiddled with his Yugo M57. So what's the verdict? Go ahead and judge his gun if you would. Anyone? Yeah, there ain't nothing wrong with it. 
Looks communist. I can't see it. The uh, is this one of the mags or grips that has the mag release in it? It looks different, so I don't know what the gun looked like originally. It looks like one of them old SIGs to me. E20 or something. But uh, he took off the Soviet grip and then added this. But I guess it already had a mag release up here, right? So it's just a different shape. It's just to give it a different grip. Ergonomics, sounds like. So it's a Tok'ra? What the uh, is that a Yugo version of a toke, or is that something else? It looks like it. I think it's is a toke. Right? Is that the nine millimeter model? No. Well, I no, it's it's not not seven by whatever. Twenty-five, 25. seven sixty-two. Yeah. Yeah, he put the little extension on the end of the barrel and changed the grip up and stuff. He was talking about yeah, doing some stuff to it earlier. <clears throat> So there's a 12-minute video posted on gun channels. Then we got a Daily Gun Show from the other night. We got a Gizzard posting Every Second Matters with his uh, Taurus of some sort. Honda posting something about the red flag laws, uh, excuse me, red flag confiscation orders in Colorado. Um, ASA, American Suppressor Association, has something going on on July 9th, so I figured I would post about that. Now that I said that, there's something else happening soon that I feel like I need to post. I just found out about. I just can't remember what it is. Um, but I'm assuming there's going to be more and more things happening in Second Amendment uh, as far as um, uh, rallies and events. Oh, you know what it is? The 50 state, uh, the D.C. project where all the one lady from each state shows up. I don't think I got the D.C. project in here. No, I don't, because that's happening in July, so I need to put the DC project in there. All right, we need more people in gun channels from DC area who can go down and, and cover stuff when it happens in DC, especially stuff like that. All right, so we got Sand Hills, rocking Every Second Matters patch, and posting it for Every Second Matters. Then we got Pawnery. I voted for the guy, but Trump says New York. Legal harassment, forcing businesses to flee. What are you seeing here? So I may have voted for a guy, but any time the president mentions the NRA or guns in general, I'm reminded how easily he pulled an about face on bump stocks. Then opined about suppressors, basically signaling further delays in the hearing protection acts. For a guy who wooed voters with the eight-year attack on her Second Amendment rights is over, he sure is proving himself otherwise. Uh, mentioning the NRA at all is just a political play to pander to the gun voting voters, gun owning voters with the short term memories and of the two central betrayals. So uh, I did not read this file, but yeah, it sounds pretty spot on. I mean, does do you guys think that Trump realizes that that's opening up a window to more just legislation, even though he's not directly banning firearms? Does he not realize that or what? Because he hasn't exactly restricted guns themselves, right? I personally think that he thinks of guns like cars or video games or motorcycles or fishing boats. Like, he just thinks of them as, like, some people's interest and they're about as important or unimportant yeah. as anything else. So I just don't think he... I think he understands that some people really care about their guns, but he also thinks that some people, like, really care about their, you know, fill in the blank. So... You know what I mean? I think he probably isn't too two A or very two A at all. So he doesn't have much uh Stake in it, I guess you could say or whatever much. Yeah, yeah like he yeah. doesn't give it much more significance than, you know, again like a guitar or a motorcycle. So he's probably willing to say, like, Oh look, you know, guns are noisy, then do them over there. You know, do your guns, but do them over there. You know, I don't think he puts a lot of thought into the whole tyranny. You probably can you these people who are there being ty tyrannical can they think they're tyrants i don't think they do right i think they think like we know what's going on and this is everybody's best interest or this is a good way to do it you know we we think there's three options and this is the best one of them you know we're all dealing with repercussions and it looks tyrannical 
I suspect. So I don't think they're up there fighting against anybody. But we'll figure it out in the next chat. Once we have that scheduled, we'll compute to solve that on Monday. Then with every sec matters, so a couple other people posting stuff. Uh, Patriot doesn't realize it, but that's a red every second matter shirt. So can you get killed walking into the? Just I'm just concerned about the brown belt and brown holster. I thought he would be a brown, <laughs> yeah. I mean a black guy. Yeah, they are black. Uh, pretty brown. <laughs> no, that's just Oklahoma vision. <laughs> that's Oklahoma brown. Yeah. Everyone in California, okay. We guess so. Nobody from California is in here, are they? Angelina and Mad, and they're both. They're, Angelina was over there in Gary's, and Mad's in here talking. So I think we're good. Okay. Oh no! What did I do? Hang on, I did it again. That's pretty much everybody, isn't it, in California? No, Mr. Knives. Oh yeah, Knives. Oh. Yeah, there's three. Every once in a while, uh, uh, Brandon or Heavy will go over there to hang out with their people. I guess we got. Osh is in California. Uh, yeah, Cal Calaveras. Yeah. So there's two out of ten safe anyways. There's a Smeggy sighting over in the YouTube chat. Yeah, there's Zorro, and then there's Smeggy right now, but he's way north of all this. I think we're missing other people, too, actually, though. All right. Now we got the uh, two-way workshop and the uh, Every Second Matters. I think we got a bunch of stuff in there. It ended up being a couple of bunch of hours long. Uh, there was Patriots thing, a couple of new people joining in. Then we had Ghost doing his chat with the uh, long-range guy, Charlie Melton. Melton? Charlie Melton, yeah. Then uh, Sand Pills had uh, 2 a 2A Tuesday for Every Second Matters. Uh, Angelina had some kind of creepy off hair lobby, it looks like. Breitbart, Navy SEAL, Eddie Gallagher found not guilty of killing ISIS fighter. Why was I looking at that? Oh, was that something that happened overseas and then, like, later they're trying to suggest that there was some kind of war crime or something? Yeah, yeah. the claim was that there was a mercy killing because the kid was going to be tortured and killed by ISIS as soon as he got turned back over, so, yeah. The guy had odd to be persecuted for something like that. Yeah, it's that's creepy when they're going to start. I uh, think he was. I think he was injured. And the 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 the, the ISIS guy they had captured, and then for a while they said, "Oh no, the medic did it," and then they said the SEAL did it, and then they couldn't say who did. I mean, it was just a cluster. I got to go grab something to drink, so I'm going to leave everybody on this one for a minute. Uh, Henri, I guess, again, eyes bigger than his stomach, and he can't, he's ever satisfied with his guns, so he's always got to get more guns. So he's seen this one in the auction, and he bid on it, even though he doesn't have the money, and then he won. So it is a uh, jungle carbine. Would you buy a jungle carbine? Yes or no? And talk for a while, because i got to be some drink. Mm, I'm on mobile. I can't see her. Are we talking to infield? Yeah, I think. Is it infield or not? I think so. Is that looks like it's a sporter, isn't it, or not? Yeah, I think it's sporterized. I can't tell. <clears throat> it's I mean, so small. It's such a small picture. Pottery can kiss it because I know at uh, Tulsa he seems to. Uh, if it's not him, it's Mister Wright that seems to bogart all the good deals on the infields <laughs> and stuff like that. But uh, no, I own one, so you know, uh, would I would I buy one? Uh, if I did not have one, probably because they're cool, but I would want, um, I would definitely want, I would want everything to be accurate. I'm not necessarily concerned with matching numbers and things like that, but, uh, I would want everything to be there and it to be accurate. And, um, apparently there's a lot of the, a lot of them out there and I don't know what pawner you went to with that, but apparently there's a lot of them out there that are fakes. And I believe it was the last time. We were at Tulsa cycle camp was schooling us on there's like three major things. And I can't even remember what he talked about now, but there was three major characteristics you could look at, um, to spot a fake. So hit cycle camp up. If, uh, you want to know more about that, <laughs> maybe so, he needs to make a video on it. 
when, when you say fake, you mean that somebody had modified a non-jungle carbine and converted to a jungle yes. carbine? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, that's what I mean. Yes. Yeah. 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 Not like a counterfeit gun or anything like that that some company made. Right. Okay. Right. No, it's just I tried to make one. I remember him sitting there talking about it for like 30 minutes, but I don't remember anything he said. <laughs> yeah, you know, I can vaguely remember it like had something to do with the where the where the uh, magazine went in, either the trigger guard or the magazine. It was something around that area, and it was something around, I want to say the rear sight base, and then it was maybe something to do with where the barrel was around the front of the receiver where the barrel screwed in or something. I want to say those were the three spots he was talking about, but I don't remember for the life of me what he was talking about to, to look for. I'll just say this. If you're looking at end builds, you better hurry up and snag one because they are not going down in price, man. They're really getting up there. Yep. Good. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure locally everybody can always find something in a pawn shop or a gun show, but man, you go There's... online and like, oh, forget it. There's only one that I've I've got several. There's only one that I pine for at this point, um, and maybe one of these days I've got some money because Tulsa will be the place probably to find it. And that's a number um, a number four Mark One for Zachary contract, and uh, and and a gr and a grenade grenadier or whatever. Uh, so there's two. I lied. There's two. Do you have the uh, 308 Ishapur? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, those yeah. are awesome. I've got man. I've got the four ten. Got the four ten issue four. Okay. Yep. And the problem is is that, you know, for a lot of people they maybe they can only afford to get a sporter one because they're a couple hundred bucks off the price of not an original, but even the sporters are gonna go up price eventually too. So Yeah. Gonna, just just to have the one. same like the same issue as like the martinis or whatever where they, they get stuff that was made in other countries and just kind of modify them or whatever. Is that, that's what you're talking about? Well, really? I mean, that was a, yeah. Just a yeah. boring one and turn it into a more valuable one. You know, it's like when you get okay. a jungle car, or I mean a uh, M2 and somebody puts like a, either an aftermarket or some sort of a hobble together paratrooper stock to make it seem more valuable. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But normally it started life is just a plain old, you know, M1. Yeah. And the concept of sporterizing was, you know, those were really cheap firearms. The surplus firearms back in the day were, you know, coming back, they were super cheap. And then, but, I'm a dozen. And, but, yeah. you know, if you wanted and, and made, made excellent hunting rifles and stuff. So, you know, but, you know, with the stock design and all that, they were really, really weren't designed for, you know, um, you know, added a little bit of weight, you know, in a lot of cases, it wasn't necessarily ergonomic for hunting purposes and trekking through the woods and stuff like that. And then let's just face it. I mean, there's a certain beauty with Milsert, you know, old school Milsert military rifles, but they're not beautiful works of art. And then, so a lot of people would, you know, do the custom stocks with the ivory inlays and, you know, all this other stuff just to make a really pretty hunting rifle. So, um, you know, added their own their own flair to it, and because yeah, exactly what you said, they were a dime a dozen and cheap, and all that led to you know all that sporterizing led to us being able to find them nowadays or years ago and actually have something that's valuable <laughs> when we can find one that's still original and and all the parts being there. So thanks to everybody who sporterized them back in the day. I appreciate that. <laughs> Then we'll go to HVS. This saw somebody with a go fuck yourself uh, decal. So I guess Matt has got to copyright that already. That was in Hawaii. Uh, Dead Horse was saying no early watch till later. Uh, guy's wife started her own channel over here on the gun channel. So everybody's welcome to start as many channels as you want. Just go up to the top of any page, click on channels there, and start making them within reason. Uh, Travis posted a thing about uh, coffee, some kind of coupon. Yeah, Black Rifle it has 20% off through tomorrow, I believe, site-wide on everything, including clearance. Rick had his uh, shooting with disabilities chat on Wednesday. And then I stumbled across this chat, or this video. Has anybody seen this girl's videos before? Mm -mm. I wouldn't imagine anybody would have. I think she's only a year old. Um... 
but uh you know i didn't think you're allowed to i didn't this is a youtube ad i'm not putting up so you <laughs> so uh what did she say yeah so did you say you had somebody was talking about having twenty thousand subs earlier 18 mm. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm up to 18 right now. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So she's at 39,000 subs, right? And he, you haven't watched this video then. Kelly does mm -hmm. her thing. Mm -hmm. so I found this because I watch videos. I was watching, what's this guy's name? Casey? Casey no. Neistat. Casey Neistat or whatever, this YouTuber guy. I saw his uh, sort of description of how he got his thing and it made me interested. So I've been watching a couple other uh, YouTubers who are doing their thing. Sort of describing their their adventures on YouTube type of video. So this one was described to me. So she starts out. It's a twenty minute video, and she talks about uh, her first attempts at YouTube was when she discovered it, and she she was living in Germany. So she posted some videos just about like the weird stuff that was happening in Germany as an American. What seemed weird to her, and she got seven hundred views on that first video, the first day or something, or you know within the first week. So that gave her encouragement to continue working on YouTube. And you can see that she didn't immediately have ultimate success. She had a lot of views on that first video. But then as she was playing around with it, uh, she talks about how she sort of discovered that you could manipulate, you could play with it. You could you know, be aware with your analytics of what your reach is and who you're reaching so that you can adjust your, your focus or your whatever and, and, and adjust your interactions with YouTube. So that's what she did. She figured out that most people were from Germany watching her because of her like uh, giving them an American's point of view of Germany. And she just catered to that. And then when she moved to the United States, she was needed to change that. And she talks about all this. And this happened within a year. And she didn't have ultimate success or anything. She's not like a rock star. But on the other hand, she talks, she, she really lays it down as if she was trying to tell her like grandmother how to do YouTube. She really explains it well. In 18 minutes, she pretty much gives you the whole YouTube game and talks about uh, everything, all the different things you've heard about or asked questions about. She's basically, she says in the beginning of this video, she's doing this video for all her friends and family and people that'll just ask her, how do you make money on YouTube? And, you know, what are the details? So she talks about, uh, because she's an international channel, the differences between countries and revenue and uh, her for example, she's making six dollars and twenty six cents a thousand. Again, I didn't even know they could talk about this, but in the, in the Germany, that same video only really make two bucks per thousand. Uh, she talks about being aware of uh, the gun owners being pushed off of YouTube. Uh, she's had uh, some stuff that's been demonetized, so she's she really gets into a lot of it. Um, and she's by no way a guns channel or a gun channel or anything. But then she gets into uh, how she started to gain some success on YouTube. Anyway, long story short, over a year, she's made $18,000 in one year on YouTube. And again, not having anything ultimately successful of her, an initial video with like 700 views and then some initial success and then figuring out the her niche and what to do and, and working towards it. Uh, her overall summary is that it's not worth, you know, it's not dependable enough or, you know, there's too many variables that it's neat to make some money but it's not a it's not an engine you don't just do this and return you know get to that return so she's not uh recommending anybody do it as a living or anything but she says it's you know certainly a uh an inspirational whatever like a reason to pursue it as a hobby like that they're you know you can get viral but you can also pursue viral so uh i highly encourage you to check it out i didn't know that people could put their numbers up there but it's been here for a while been up there for a month almost and uh 100 something thousand views and eight well she just put a number she didn't show her analytics right no it's you're not seeing the screen she's just screenshot no, her analytics here i'll no, go back no. roberto yeah. blake just roberto blake released a video showing his showing yeah. his screen just like that okay so i guess maybe that's not even a big deal anymore yeah they've eased off of it a little bit <clears throat> yeah if anything, everybody sees that and goes, you make $18,000 for making YouTube videos. I'm going to do it. You know, <laughs> Who isn't going to look at this and go, oh, it must be simple. Oh, it must be simple. There's $18,000 right there. And that was one year. So. And it doesn't even cost you $1 to make a YouTube video. Seriously. 
So that's basically a thousand bucks a month. Just you know, start spending it now. Anyway, I really thought that video was interesting. It came across uh, as I was surfing and uh, highly recommend it. So I stuck it on the main page there. Uh, really cuts into, like I say, if you were trying to have, if you were trying to explain to your grandparents how the big YouTube game is, she explains it at that level and very succinctly, even though it's 12 minutes long. All right, then uh, who posted this? Honda posted this thing about... Uh, What's his face talking to this historian? Did anybody watch this? Crowder? Yeah, those are awesome, uh, and I'll tell you why they're awesome. And and that's David Barton, and that's who he's talking to, mm -hmm. the Heritage Foundation. Uh, I've got multiple multiple videos that I bought back in the day on VHS and even DVD of David Barton. So as far as history, I'm telling you, if you're into that uh, and you don't know who David Barton is, you probably need to. He's amazing. Yeah, it was pretty good. He, I didn't watch the whole thing because it was long, but uh, I don't like this guy at all, though. So this, this, I, I watched it in spite of this guy, and I could have easily not had this guy involved and been much more impressed with it. But uh, whatever, you know, this guy must appeal to somebody wearing his crazy outfit and shorts, being weird. Maybe the kids. Maybe the kids these days. Anybody else watch that video? Yeah, I, I watched that. that. I watched that one, and that's. And there's multiple parts to that, too. So I watched it all, like I said, because I like David Barton. So it wasn't a Crowder thing. Crowder, eh, I can take him or leave him, right? Uh, I think he, he he brings a lot of the, the stuff that he goes through. I think he brings on himself, honestly. But, uh, yeah, it was the it was the whole, it was the other guy there. It's mainly why I watched it. Anybody else watch this one? No, I didn't get a chance to see it. I didn't. I haven't really been online that much since this would have been posted. Yeah, nope, I haven't seen it either. But I will go watch it, and I'm going to watch that other one you were just showing. Uh, I did listen. To, I did listen to that one though. Yeah, Gabby Craco. She's pretty cool. So um, I've been aware of her thing. You know, she grew up in Venezuela, right? Com uh -huh. Competition shooter, went to the Olympics, moved over here, shot for the Olympics for us, right? And then or no. no she just worked to competition shooting here, but now it's like an ambassador for NRA, but like in a good way. And then, uh, author mom, right? Uh, yeah, she's a part of the NRA women or whatever. Um, yeah. And she does multiple competitions, shoots for team Walther, a lot of public speaking outreach. And a lot of that conversation was extremely inspirational for Especially, and that's the point of next generation, of course. But um, is extremely inspirational. A lot of the stuff she had was talking about for you know youth out there. Um, yeah, she's just got a really good attitude. She's she's cool. I'm just gonna throw this out there. That's Clover's best series he has. I really enjoy and those. Um, and and it's you know it. What's amazing about that, and and one of the things I knew that was gonna be a great conversation, and. The reason I knew that is because she come from another country. <laughs> when you get people that come from another country at an old enough age to understand, right? I mean, if they come over here two or three or four years old, five years old or something, maybe not. But, you know, when they come on, come over here in teenage years or later, then they really start understanding the difference. And it just seems like they've got a whole different perspective on this country and life in general. And, um, it's just it's just a very interesting concept as opposed to people that were born here and just complain all the time about this about this country about whatever it might be um it's just i don't know it's that's impressive to me when you talk to somebody who doesn't appreciate and you start to talk about something and their eyes roll back and then you talk to somebody who understands and appreciates and you talk to them and their eyes just go up like thinking about all the possibilities and the you know the, the positive stuff just comes rolling out all right, all right. so another keep you off air lobby then we had let's see oh i posted up that somebody could be back at number 42 so somebody took the opportunity to be back around number 42 on the Clash Patch Batch earlier this week. We had a daily gun show. Then I uh, posted, resist the pull of the path of least resistance. That was in the middle of something I was listening to. That was cool, so I posted it over here. So resist the pull of the path of least resistance. That it's easy to do whatever is easy, right? Resist that pull. And end up 
doing better. I think uh, we learned that in a map you shared here a while back. Oh, that might be in there. It sounds like something that would be in that like diagram map thing. Yeah. But what was it called? Success? Or persistent? I think it was success. Success. It was something success, anyways. Road path to success. Road to success, maybe. Uh, let's see. Wishing you a glorious Fourth of July, but I fear being labeled as politically incorrect. It was pretty politically incorrect. I can't believe he said glorious like that, but implying glory. Please. Uh, having someone suggest that you check out. I don't know what this is. Is this really a thing? Or is this something like making fun of that other ranch? Memolicious? So, I don't know. I can't keep what these kids are making fun of these days. It's either sarcastic <laughs> or it's not. I don't know. Yeet! Oh, my God. <laughs> so, uh, uh, this is for the July lobby he had open. And uh, Patriot posting some. See, I don't post on Fourth of July. I think it's sacrilege, but whatever. <laughs> drink, it was made what, what if I pre-recorded G and released on the Fourth of July? Is that okay then? That's, that's premeditated <laughs> sacrilege. Premeditated. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll go confess. Confess. So. <laughs> so here's Honda doing some kind of uh, uh, conspiracy chat. Uh, or actually, he just posted to his conspiracy uh, chat. The Fourth of July is a conspiracy. Is that what we're we're saying? No, now? no, that was his Sunday conspiracy chat. <laughs> I guess he just hadn't posted it. So, right. uh, no, yeah, so got, but I don't know why he decided to post it on the Fourth of July. Could that answer <laughs> that? So yeah. then Clover did his thing about this dude who carried a cannon from the British, just went over took their cannon. It's kind of mm -hmm. neat. Uh, Travis posting the. Uh, I didn't listen to this because I want to listen to a bunch of old guys singing, but it's a bunch of old guys singing a song. All right, which one was your grandpa? You said it was the third one from the front, and I didn't yeah, understand so what, that. Yeah, so what this is real quick is every year the Kiwanis members are local business owners and, and stuff, guys and girls. Um, they do a patriotic concert that's about an hour long on the 4th of July in Seward, Nebraska, which is actually supposedly America's 4th of July city. And oh, okay. uh, this was Battle Hymn of the Republic. They do about 15 patriotic songs, and a lot of those guys were, were members of various branches of the service. See, my grandpa is the third guy right there in the front. He's actually the host for the program. This guy? Uh, no, 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 not the guy directing. My grandpa's the third from the right uh, in the front row. He's just now, but no, one more over. The guy on the right. Yeah, the guy on the left was actually in the Coast Guard because <laughs> they do all four branches and they this sing guy? the theme songs. Uh, yeah, that's my grandpa. Yeah. Okay. So that's where I was at. I'd actually film that there, and we watch that concert every year. I haven't seen it. Well, they do a different different groups of songs but they tend they usually end with uh battle hymn of the republic at the very end it's a it's a pretty big deal they got about forty thousand people that come to town which is a big deal for a small town nebraska uh they have all kinds of patriotic activities going on during the day it's a lot of fun yeah so you're saying that's where the fourth of july concept comes from uh no no i'm just saying the seward nebraska is actually called the fourth of july city because of all the stuff that they do and people passing through stop there on the way to vacation and stuff and it's pretty cool man oh okay so yeah. they just sort of adopted it as their thing yeah 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 they call it a yeah it's just kind of a boasting thing but they do have a lot of activities that they do it's pretty cool man okay because sometimes you know something orig or an originates someplace and it's not like yeah that. okay yep and then you had caliber corner Oh, yep. that was on the 4th of July. Yep, yep, yep. We recorded that one after last week's oh, episode. Oh. Hashtag yep. fake caliber corner. And then you got yeah, Gizzard. It's like more corner. like semi-synthetic, I guess, but yeah. You got uh, Gizzard posting a flag over here. And then you got Clover doing his show on Thursday. You got Dead Horse posting a lobby. You got a 4th of July after lobby, because I didn't do a Daily Gun show on that day. Uh, that's let's see. They all started getting drunk in here, so they were all drunk in there last night playing drinking games. Uh, that's why nobody's around. Notice nobody's around today because they all got drunk in here last night. That dodge the Roman candle. Is that? <laughs> oh no, no. It was oh, okay. to drink the word, and then they would all drink whenever. And that's oh, when I quit. So I don't know what happened after that. But <laughs> just know nobody showed up in the morning anywhere. So then, uh, reflecting on the American Revolution in 1818, John Adams observed, but what do we mean by the American Revolution? Do we mean the American War? The revolution was effected before the war commenced. The revolution was in the minds and hearts of the people, a change in their religious sentiments, the duties and obligations. This radical change in the principles, opinions, sentiments, and affections of the people was the real American Revolution. That's spot on. 
put a lot of these things in here, but that's a good one. Like the, the, the consequences of the war were the result of the revolution, but the revolution took place in everyone's hearts and minds, right? They just, they had that resolve that we are no longer British and be damned if you try to say otherwise. And then the consequence was them trying to say otherwise for a while. I haven't seen that one before. Uh, budget had right of the people. That was a pretty good show. Uh, bullets posted in these four and a half million dollar meteorite handguns. I don't know. Did something new happen, or is he just discovering those and posting about them? I didn't click on that. My review's coming out on those next week. By the way, I just bought two of them. Put them on credit, or just buy them cash. Gary loaned me the money. I did. <laughs> Now we were, we were three backers away from uh, reaching the the goal and and uh, finishing the campaign. Well, not finishing the campaign, but reaching the goal, so that we could start reaching towards uh, stretch goals, I guess, throughout the rest of the weekend. So I went live earlier today and did a telethon. I had done some telethons on Thursday, no, Wednesday before the Fourth of July as well. It was actually pretty neat. So if you're doing a crowdfunding thing, I'd encourage you. Put that in your plan and maybe plan it ahead of time. You'd probably have better luck than I did just doing them randomly. But it was the 4th of July, so there was certain people around. But uh, I think the telethon actually was kind of neat. And if you put a little bit of thought uh, into it or plan it a little bit, you could probably have people show up and hang out for portions of it or do something, you know, sort of like Jerry Lewis-esque or something, you know, and have some fun with it as a companion or a part of your crowdfunding projects. Uh, anyway, we did one the other day, and I think quite a few people actually ended up, because I did like four hours or something worth of telethon, and it made some awareness and got some people um, motivated to participate where, you know, honestly, they probably would have participated anyway, but it got them motivated to participate that day, which then got some, you know, us that much closer to the goal, and after a little bit more people jumping on board, we're now reach the goal and now we can actually reach towards stretch goals if i would have just you know not done that perhaps and let the natural things happen like a bunch of people might have jumped on the last day but then we would have no time to reach stretch goals so on the other hand i probably could have started the campaign doing it right off the bat and gotten funded the first night and that might be something that you put into your projects too so uh you know shining the light and spending some time uh I'm a little used to just going on without a plan, but if you're not familiar with that or comfortable going on without a plan, I don't think it would be too tough to schedule a nice long show as long as you can schedule your own time to do it. But I think it was worth it. Anyway, I went live for three hours today and we reached the goal. So thanks to everybody who participated over there, had some fun, turned it into a two-way workshop. Tony Simon showed up, Clover was in there, some others, and we ended up chatting about um, quite a few things and kind of came up with an idea to do another crowdfunding project. I don't know if we'll end up talking about that in a minute here or not. Uh, and then I had meant to talk to, oh no, I, did, I, I asked Travis to think about the 18 subs or whatever. That was in regards to this girl's video. So we talked yeah. about that. Okay. I will definitely check that one out, man. That sounds interesting. Uh, let's see. So then we got uh, Pottery posted on that Discord. What is everybody's opinion of Discord? Uh, let's go left to right. Clover Tech? Discord. Not our Discord, just Discord in general. This is, eh, is what I'm going to say. Gizzard? I've dabbled with it, but I haven't really figured out anything useful to do with it yet. Hmm. Discord Dabbler. Okay. Patriot? Never messed with it. Uh, Snob? I'm referring to answer this till I have more time to spend with it. I've used the text chat, so I'm on a different Discord, but never really done anything with it. Okay, Travis. I mean, you know, it's come in handy for the gaming videos we've done with NEA Matt. I mean, that's that's nice. I like the chat feature on it. That's pretty cool. Got the app on my phone. It seems to work pretty good. Um, you know, if they let us freely communicate about our passions, then great. You know, I got nothing wrong with that. So it's another resource we can use to communicate. Yeah, the function of it is fine. I mean, it doesn't. Yeah. Not, I mean, it works fine technically for sure. And then for like what you're talking about, where you're basically just watching a video game, maybe I don't know how video games work. So you're you're each 
playing a video game console like a PlayStation or a computer. Yeah. And then and then additionally you got your computer on mm-hmm. and even though you can chat through the video game probably that's going to be with all the little weird kids and stuff that are in there playing whatever weird games they're playing with their chat headsets. So instead you go over to Discord and have your own just shared room where you chat about whatever you feel like. Yeah, we were having trouble. Matt was having trouble getting the audio to pick up just straight streaming. So with having us go through Discord's chat, he was able to switch the audio source over on his mixer table thing, whatever. So that oh, it, would, it, it pulled a better audio stream than it was doing when it was just running uh, through the Hangouts. But his, so his goal is to stream his video game with you guys involved as opposed to just some of the other kids that are just streaming their video games yeah he'll he'll be streaming on his own twitch channel we're playing with him in the same lobby like we'll be going through steam we'll all be together in the same lobby playing the same game he's streaming live on steam and he's using our audio as we talk to each other he's capturing our audio and using discord to push the audio through the the hangouts using obs or whatever oh my goodness that seems so crazy convoluted and it's not because he, he created a channel that we can join in. So when, when we're on that channel on Discord, then that's got the audio. And then he runs the OBS software with the audio through it. But and the, his, yeah. the stream, the Steam is a separate thing to run. The OBS is a separate thing to run. The YouTube is a separate thing to run. The video yeah. is a separate <laughs> thing to run. The Discord is a separate thing to run. And then if I'm not incorrect, he has between his OBS and between his YouTube, he has some sort of a splitter that yeah. distributes it out to multiple things. So, wow, he's got a lot of processing power going on. But, um, okay, so for that, though, like I say, if you're, I mean, he's 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 managing to stream it, so he's pretty clever with that, I guess, because it seems like most kids that are streaming are just playing their own headset in front of their mm-hmm. own video game, and then a million other kids are paying attention to what they're doing in their living room, or you guys are trying to get multiple people from around the country together to then share to some other group of people who were watching you on YouTube, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The difference is when you just do it on Twitch, kids throw millions of dollars at you. And here we're trying to get 15 viewers, 20. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) So those kids that are playing the video games that are good at it and that have a lot of audience or whatever you call it, like they'll be playing and then they'll like, They'll do like a double kill or a headshot or whatever the hell kids like. And then kids will be like, that was the best double kill I ever seen. Here's 20 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. My wife was watching a girl who was streaming her crocheting on Twitch and people were super chatting her while she was doing her crocheting and she was just there talking to them and she'd acknowledge the chat going off on the right side while she was live streaming and they would throw five bucks, 10 bucks, you know. She has, she has a knitting channel on, on Twitch. That's what she does. She knits on Twitch. It has God knows how many followers. So I have seen people back in the day um, who did, well, Huck used to come into gun channels and just work on knives and do engraving and, you know, metal work, basically, type of stuff. And uh, he didn't do it with Super Chats because we didn't have Super Chats really back then, although he could have done something like that. But then there was another uh, friend of his that's on Instagram and she would carve like coins, like a 50 cent piece. She'll Mm -hmm. carve the face on a 50 cent piece into a skull or like into an Indian or something. So, um, turns a coin into like a little piece of art and she'll do that, um, live or whatever. And I could see something like that where she's in there doing her thing. And then of course, chatting about politics or two a or whatever. And people coming by and dropping a tip, you know, that's sort of like when you're walking down the street and somebody's, doing something impressive, you know, some sort of a skill instead of a mime or something, you know, they're out there doing something interesting. You know, somebody's going to drop a couple of bucks. That's that sort of thing, right? Yep. Or just maybe to see, you know, that artist doing their thing, I guess, you know, maybe with the art type of stuff. But anyway, I think that's cool. I think that's neat. And uh, the more stuff we see like that, then the more people figure out that, you know, hey, instead of spending... I don't know, whatever it is they spend on DVDs. Like, let's spend that two bucks at a time on interesting stuff I see online. Yep. So anyway, I don't know who's on Stitch or Twitch, I guess that was. Twitch? Yeah, Twitch, yeah, yeah. That's probably mostly youngins. Uh, well, I mean, the thing is, anymore, you got gamers that are middle-aged men. I mean, it's it's so 
varied anymore. It just depends on the, you know, 20 somethings and below, but there's a lot of old school gamers that are on there too that have channels. And like so, you're saying, there's knitting and stuff, so there is more than just video games. Oh, yeah. You can, I think you can live stream whatever you want. Yeah. Now, uh, being able to do it. So, like, my main other, my main problem, we were talking about what's it called? We were talking, talking about Discord. I'm going to open up Discord. So, for people that uh, aren't familiar with it, I'm clicking on the Gun Channels Discord thing, and it opens up like this. And they're snarky and funny. So it's saying accept, and I'll say accept. And now it'll say something funny. I missed it because it happened too quickly. It'll say like respawning you now or whatever. Yeah. Unreserializing the network or something it said there. So you are you open up into, I'm in the gun channels one because that's the one that I clicked the link to. But you can see over on the left here, there's Gary Gizzard has one. AWAG, I guess, has one. Uh, Never Enough Ammo has one. There's one for gun websites. There's one for gun channels that I'm in right now. Osh has one for the Ham Radio Cash Crash Course. And for some reason, Yankee has one. So uh, those are the ones that I have had invites to, I guess. But, you know, you potentially have more over here, I suppose. So I'm in the gun channels one. And in the gun channels one, there are these areas or rooms, I guess. You could call them channels is what they're actually called. Uh, I could close this thing, and then you'd see just the rooms over here on the left. This is the actual chat. So I'm in the lobby, and this is what's being said in the lobby. If I go to gun shows, this is what's being said in gun shows. If I go to two-way events, this is what's being said over there. So this is a way to have multiple rooms inside of a channel. And then uh, over here is Pottery is in there. I'm in there. A couple other people are online. And then there's a whole bunch of people that are offline. So... That's what it is. And then you can type words in here. And you can put these stupid looking stupid things in here. Like, hey, I'm a dolphin at a desk. Idiot or something. And then you Remember, man, when you want to reach an audience, there's a lot of people that respond to memes. I mean, that's what they are into. The younger, especially younger demographic, that's their thing, man. Oh, man, I want to put this poop in it's here. It's crazy, but... but... I'll put that poop in there. That's a pretty poop. No, I could... I just... <laughs> I just don't like them because on gun channels, these things eat up bandwidth. So I don't yeah. like them. But uh, I don't care if people use them on Discord. It doesn't cost us no. So there's Gary posting that right now, right? He's supposed to that right this second? Yep. <laughs> right. So so it's a way that you can, and it's neat. Like I say, it, it functionally works fine. You can create a channel. You can create as many rooms in there to have specific conversations. So if we want to talk about reloading on the gun channels thing, this is where you do it. You want to talk about smeggy stuff, that's where you do it. You want to talk about the daily gun show, that's what you. That's where you do it. Um, so then that way the things can be organized or what. Uh, and then you can see who's going on. So I think you could probably like click on somebody and make a private chat or something. I don't know. Um, but then we didn't talk about the voice, so I could go down here and certain channels or text and they can also be voice so once their voice a bunch of whole bunch of people can be in there and you can talk to each other on your headsets and your microphones and that's what sounds like travis and matt and everybody does for their conversations when they're all looking at the same video game game happening this is just that so they can talk to each other but we've also done these in hangouts we've used this a couple of different ways but the problem is this doesn't broadcast to anywhere none of this does so all this stuff just happens in here so I look at this like, uh, since you can't just go to Discord, for example, and browse around. Like if you went to Discord and just went to main Discord, like is there even a way to, there's, there's really nothing, everything's kind of like your own business. So unless you have a link to a specific channel or a specific place, it's just like going to a bunch of storage sheds or going to an apartment building. All you're gonna see is a bunch of doors that all look the same. Except here, you don't even really see the doors. You just know that there's a bunch of stuff back there that exists. You just have to be invited to each individual one. So, you know, we are invited to certain ones, you know, that we know or people or whatever that we're following or what. See, absorbing the contents. I don't know. It's trying to be funny all the time. So uh, you can get in them, and they're perfectly great. It's just that they're pointless. They don't stream. They don't record. I mean, they are good for having private discussions, but it's only good for having private uh, unless you somehow stream what, you know, you could do a screen share like what I'm doing right now. I mean, this is technically sharing what's going on in the Discord. 
but you'd have to do something like this. It'd take something else. So that's my problem is putting too much time and investment into having conversations over here. And let's talk about new people. You know, for people that know what they're doing, you guys are playing video games with each other. Nobody cares. Do it here or wherever, right? But if we're talking about like Matt's Monday and Wednesday shows, where I've yeah. Matt's been doing that for a while, and he'll tell you like one of the reasons he does that is he enjoys having conversations, but he really enjoys the fact that, or he really appreciates the fact that he's bringing new people into the conversation, that people are discovering his flavor and the, the room that he has and the way that it's open. And he'd lose that element of it. You know, he would. And other people who have that aspect to their projects would lose that. It would be more of a presentation and less of a, of a whatever. Like you teach somebody how to work uh, YouTube and Hangouts, they could go do their own Hangout and they could start a new thing. In fact, that happened all the time, right? You teach somebody how to use Discord and all they can do is open up another cave in this crazy tunnel and talk to themselves. You know, it's like just teaching each other how to do something that doesn't have an external version. So that's my only problem with Discord. It works fine and everything. It's just that it's not not a publishing platform. It's not a distribution platform or a streaming platform. Now, Twitch, on the other hand, which means I started all that, is oh, Twitch, right. on the other hand, is different, right? Okay. You, I got to piss again. So. On Twitch, you can go in and just browse for new channels. So, like you're saying, there's knitting or something. Like, you can probably go in here and Yeah, my wife had some. Um, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Yep. And then... I don't know how the hell you find the categories, but there's more than just stuff. See, that means you can act. So that's the thing I wish Discord had. And then I would be all right with it. Like, if you could tell your channel, like, okay, I want it to be private. Like, leave us alone. No problem. But if you want to go public, then be listed in some list like this. And then I would think Discord would have so much more potential. Again, for, like, you know, building a project on it or getting a community built using it type of thing. But it's obviously super heavy in the video games. But I don't know how to switch this category thing. On live channels. But anyway, so I haven't used Twitch too much. Have you used Twitch at all? I no, I haven't hardly used it. I've got a channel, but I've only I've only got it so I could join in with Matt. Um, when we tried to use the voice stuff on it till it started having problems and bogging down the computer and stuff, so. Anybody else use Twitch at all? Mm -mm. I think I got to sign on to it somewhere. It was down back there now. So, G, here's an example of, I'll put this on the internal for you guys, what the knitting thing was that my wife watches. Here you go. So she just live streams basically at that time, announces on social media that she's going to be doing knitting and stuff. And then you people watch it in real time. And on the right side, they've got the same kind of messaging thing going on. Like you have a live stream on YouTube and then people can do their own version of super chats and stuff while you're doing it. And then can you go back and watch your old videos? Uh, I don't know because I don't watch it. My wife does. I'll have to ask her, but she's sleeping right now. So, um, you don't have to wait for it. it does. Yeah, it does yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, it might just be a one time thing at that point. I, no, don't know. Like I think it's got a thing. bank of videos up at the top there. It does. It's just that it looks just like video just zero. She just doesn't turn hers on, but I yeah. bet you if she left them archived, then this would become like our video archive in YouTube or something. Yep, yep. So, 284 followers. And obviously, she's making enough to keep doing it. So it's cool. Plus, you know, even if you don't make a bunch of money, there's got to be something to be said for just getting some actual insight from other people that aren't trying to sell you something or, mm -hmm. you know, just want to share whatever it is you're building or, or repairing or whatever, cleaning even. Cool. So uh, I don't know how we got over there from here, probably because of stupid Discord. Oh, because of Pondry <laughs> talking about Discord over here. That's what it was. So Pondry's trying to get people over there. He likes it. Obviously, they play the video games or whatever over there. So um, it also probably works kind of good for the way that those guys do the daily uh, lobbies and stuff. You know, sometimes there's a lot of people in there and the chat's going. And then other times people get called away or, you know, there's less people in there or whatever. So it'll be kind of dormant. And uh, that's where it, almost like a forum, like a live forum kind of format works better or it can work nice because then 
um, somebody can say something and 15 minutes later somebody can address it you know where it's like in a live chat it just doesn't happen so much all right well so then it takes us to today's uh, telethon we finished it up like we said and if I look over there so we're looking over there see where we're at 1852 60 backers pretty awesome so 60 and 105 percent so uh, we're on our way to 2,000. I think at 3,000, we'll add another patch. So I think it's uh, not super possible. We've got a whole weekend, basically, to uh, dig into that. And thanks again for everybody who came in and chatted. We ended up having a bit of a two-way workshop. Uh, Patriot posted this one. Every man who loves peace, every man who loves his country, every man who loves liberty ought to have it ever before in his eyes that he may cherish it in his heart due to an attachment of the Union of America and be able to set due value on the means of preserving. So that's a long way of saying uh, cherish what the country's doing, then should have a uh, give the country due value and the pres preservation of it due value. I think. The olden words, the olden writings. <laughs> And then uh, Dead Horse had another uh, lobby open today. Here he had Foul Territory. Uh, budget had a show up here, too, that didn't get posted, I guess. And then uh, we're doing this show. How was the uh, Foul Territory, so according to plan? Yeah, it went great tonight. Wait, there was a Foul Territory tonight? Yeah, you were on it, kind of. Uh, I must have missed that. Left when you you'd slept chatted through it. You were on it, <laughs> kinda. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, it was good. Pretty good yeah. chat. We had a good discussion. We, we really did. As he said, he got a new pillow in the mail, a donut with sprinkles. I got a little donut pillow also. A while back. Um, Rich Singh is taking off. Good uh, evening. Good afternoon to Vandalista. Um, were we going to talk about something at the beginning of this show? And I was like, hey, let's talk about it live. And now we're an hour into it or something. Um, after X, X flip. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess let me. Uh, we don't have to. But oh, no. I want to dig into it. That's what it was. If everybody wants to uh, dig, if everybody's still awake, then I'd like to dig into it, actually. I just want to take a break uh, because I did offer, I believe, uh, pick your patch today. And there is only one order, so uh, I just wanted to find out if Logan is out there. Uh, if Logan's out there, then you're more than welcome to uh, pick your patch. Uh, let me double check. In. Yeah, that was only one. If Mike's out there who ordered something yesterday, uh, I put the offer out there as well. But uh, thanks to uh, people that uh, purchased stuff over at the store today. Uh, but yeah, what were we going to talk about? The X split and using it for, well, I guess multiple projects actually. Yeah. Mainly hangout replacement or anything, I think. Well, I mean, it's not a hangout replacement, but a live stream uh, upgrade. I mean, because it doesn't really. Yeah, it definitely, it's anymore. definitely going to be an upgrade. But yeah, I mean, yeah, if hangouts go away, I mean, we got to do something. So. But for me, and looking into those options, you know, I started realizing all the cool things that could be done with something like, in particular, XSplit. Yeah, I'm going to see. Ah, just do. Just do. So I'm going to see if I can screen share and open it over here, see if it works. It, uh, it uses both RAM and video card to do its thing. So because my computer doesn't have good video card, I will get. Uh, weird errors and stuff so we'll see if you can see those on screen sharing right yeah so it'll pop up here in its software so it's, it's a program running on my computer not on the browser or anything like that I guess maybe I can minimize this maybe it'll be easier to see and I don't know if this will move over or not but it says X blah blah blah's Intel HD graphics something or another HD graphics, a dedicated media or Radeon is recommended for stability. So it gives me these errors right off the bat. And then uh, right now I'm looking at um, a bunch of weirdness because I'm screen sharing here. So let me uh, 
turn that off. So what we've got is down at the bottom here. Um, well, okay, what we've got is this piece of software that's now running on my machine. And think of this as when you watch one of these shows about a TV, sh uh, TV show, like a news show or something or a sports show, they'll have like the people sitting out here at some kind of desk. They'll have a bunch of lights and the camera people, right? And then somewhere in a room, they're going to have the control room where all the TV sets are and all those buttons and switches and stuff and the people barking orders. And then they'll be talking to people in the TV cameras, right, to move around and zoom in and whatever they're going to do. And then there's some guy in the back who's, like, telling the guy who's main, running the main feed, like, which camera to ch flip to, right? You've got all that stuff happening. That's what this is. This emulates that whole room back there. So, you know, we have our own cameras, whether that be a screen share or just a picture or a webcam or anything. Like, we have our own data sources. And then these things down here are basically the different... Uh, video cameras we might have, or I mean, excuse me, these are the different uh, options we might have on the screens in that control room. So uh, you can set these little, what do they call them, scenes up, and uh, you can kind of prepare your show, and you can give it a whole nother level of, of uh, I guess, pr uh, production would be the word. Uh, and I'll get into that. So this is software that allows you to add production and stream so it's going to do uh the compiling of all these different elements and then allow you to synchronize those but then it's also going to allow you to broadcast and with xsplit is in competition with a free version called obs that we've all kind of been using to some extent the free one lets you broadcast to one stream youtube typically this X split, you pay money for it, and it gives you the ability to, to link to Facebook and YouTube and this purple one and this other blue one and a couple of more that I don't use because they're just for games. But, like, I can set up my Twitch to it, and I could have one stream going out from my computer, but it's going to go to YouTube and Facebook and wherever all at the same time. So that part's kind of neat. So now I set up this software and I, I give it some layout and some, you know, some production value. And then I hit broadcast and boom, it starts to send a stream out there. So I've, I've hooked it up with my YouTube and my Facebook. So what's happening is YouTube has a live feed. Facebook has a live feed, however many others. And I'm controlling it from right here. So now I'm going to go down. Is there any questions at this point, what we're talking about with this X split? How much are we talking for the software? So I bought, I went over there to look at it again because you can get it for free and you get like, you know, pretty much a lot of the features for free. You can pay 25 bucks for three months, I think, or you can pay 50 something bucks for the whole year. Ooh. So I went over and I was looking at it and I'm thinking I could either stick my toe in the water or just buy the whole thing for 60 bucks because who cares what 60 bucks, right? And the, op the option is OBS. So... Uh, long story short, it's either zero, 25, or 50. However, for the next couple of days, because of a 4th of July sale, um, actually, I can go grab the picture with the uh, ad on it just to double check for you. Um, I took a picture of the sale thing. So it looks like from July 4th through the 8th, so you still have some time to look at it, you get 25% off on any of the licenses. So I ended up getting the 40, the 25% off the $59 one. It was $44 for a year. So I imagine it would be 25% off the $25 for the three months. So that's how much it costs. Now, the OBS is free. So I'm going to take a second and compare the two just in a sec, just so that there's a difference between them. The XSplit, I'm told, is a little easier to deal with, but I don't know if it's that big a deal, difference. The main difference is that you with XSplit, for the money, you can connect to more than one of these at the same time. So once you get it all hooked up, you can broadcast straight to Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch all at the same time. And then the disadvantage is with XSplit, when you get to like extensions and plugins and extra things you want to plug into it or create, there's this is a proprietary system, so you're only going to get what they offer. With OBS, it's free. You can only broadcast to one at a time, and the options are more, uh, more extensive. Because it's open source, more people are creating add-ons and stuff to it so you can do more interesting stuff with obs but you are limited to that 
one stream. And if that's not a big deal, you know, everybody's going to be a little bit different, I guess. So, gee, how are you going to be able to bring people into a podcast like this using that exploit? Okay, so let me first talk about these screen things, and then, then all right. Yes. So you're right. The, this hangout thing isn't a feature. So right off the yeah. bat, there's no answer to that. But I'll show you in a second what I'm talking about. Okay. So right now, I've got these scenes. I didn't want. I kind of wanted to show what we're talking about before I dug right into the scenes. So basically, the layout here. I'm been. I've been, I'm going to switch it to nothing just so that it's not confusing. Right now, it's nothing. So let's say I wanted to. Oops. How about I actually get to nothing? I'll start a new one. Go to this new one. So now I have nothing on the screen. So I want to create a scene. Let's say I'm going to do the Daily Gun Show, and I want to do the Daily Gun Show intro screen because uh, I'm going to start a podcast or something using this X split instead of the old-fashioned way. So I can go in here, and I can find uh, just a picture. So I can go into my Daily Gun Show folder, wherever it is, and then you know find a picture that I want to use and then stick it on the screen wherever I might want. So let's say that was a better image or something. Now let's say I'm going, to, it's going to be going out to YouTube. So I'm going to go in and grab from my YouTube widgets a live chat. So now I can take that live chat and fill this whole screen with the image and put the live chat right on top and it'll just be like an overlay. Or I could just take that live chat and stick it over there and it's going to show up over there now. Um, if I really wanted, I don't do it, but I could take a webcam devices, webcam. I could take uh, my webcam. Let's say this was. You know, I don't have a camera on this um, laptop. Uh, yeah, I don't have a. I was just clicking on that thing. I don't have a camera on this laptop, but you know, I could put my picture in a picture over here. You get the idea. I could do anything. I could just kind of move the screen around. But let's say that's the beginning of the Daily Gun Show. So now I can move that one to here. So that's like the beginning of the Daily Gun Show. So now let's say I'm going to do the Daily Gun Show. I have this one set up and blah blah blah. Hey, here's a commercial or whatever. Now we're going to go on to this topic, and then I'm going to go on to this topic, and then I'm going to go on to this topic, and then a commercial, and then the show's going to end. So that's what I'm thinking. Like, uh, you know, I could um, start, you know, just doing a lot better with the Daily Gun Show just with this little concept. So now, this is just whatever I just played with here. I put this little chat room over here. I put this picture here. This one is just one big picture that says Patreon or whatever. Like I could use that as a commercial or a placeholder or like, a, you know, take a second and say thanks to the people on Patreon. Now, this one is my left monitor. So that's the monitor that you guys are living on over here, right? And that's just showing me. So that's how we accomplish having a hangout. So now if I wanted to um, start again, I'm going to create another scene over here. And I'm going to say grab the YouTube chat because who wouldn't want their youtube chat right on the screen right now you can see what people are saying over there but now i'm going to say uh add source i'm going to take uh that screen my monitor over there and i'm going to capture that whole monitor number one so now that's you guys now if i wasn't what am i screen sharing oh i'm screen sharing the screen you know if i wasn't screen sharing if i turn my camera I don't know if I can do it and you guys would stop seeing me. You get the idea though. This would be the chat, the hangout. I could have this hangout open over here and just have the window and you guys would hear, you know, you guys would all be involved in whatever I'm doing through this. Your mics would come up through, or yeah, your mics would come up. You would hear my audio and my audio would, you guys would hear it. Um, so you could still have a room with people. You might want to build a chat like that so that they don't see your chat. Uh, and then I could, I can't toggle, you know, sometimes you have that other button here where you can toggle the wind, the things off. But does that answer the question? So you could have a scene down here that's called, you know, you call it your, your chat, your hangout window. Now, what Google is getting rid of is hangouts connected to YouTube. But mm -hmm. you, go, you go to your Gmail and you can start a room like this with someone in Gmail. It's just called a a gmail hangout or it's called the gmail that's what they started this whole thing was just a, a back and forth like a skype so you could have this be a skype window um or it could be like a hangout but i'm pretty sure they're not going to get rid of hangouts they're just going to disconnect hangout plugging straight into our youtube channels where a hangout becomes a video and all that i think that's the part that they're really burdened by and uh, they don't see any point in it because i don't 
think they're going to get rid of this whole tech because they're yeah. going to this for a cost for businesses. I think we'll be able to open up an off-air room. It'll basically be like an off-air room, right? We won't have this little uh, broadcast button. We, it won't say live. It'll just be an off-air hangout. But we'll be able to then stream it via either XSplit or OBS because OBS is basically the same way, right? You find sources, you lay them out on the screen, you call them scenes so that you can flip between them. And then basically, I'm used to on on X or an OBS, it had a button down here that would say like start stream and end stream. On this one, you have to go up here and it's, it's I'm still getting used to like starting and stopping the streams. Uh, but anyway, I can't, I can, you can click record and it'll be a local recording. So I can, you could set everything up and then make your video, you know, and have a commercial in the middle of it and jump over to something and then do the next part of it and then the next topic and then end it and then come up here and click stop. And then that way you'd basically be screen capturing. So you could do some really interesting projects as a screen capture with this. Uh, software without even broadcasting and then it just creates a file on your computer you upload that to your YouTube or your gun streamer or whatever so if we want to be able to do any kind of live events that people can watch like what we're doing now I guess I'm kind of confused like how we're gonna be able to run something like that through this software so we can still do our shows well so like let's say I go over to my YouTube yeah. here yeah. right and I click on it, it's going to, because of my computer, it's taken a while. Yeah. So, you know, that's my computer, I'm pretty sure. So now it finally came up, right? If I went like this, it would just oh, start okay. a new one, right? But here, if I click yeah. down, here's my scheduled talk with Tim Knight. Here's my scheduled 2A Media Workshop. Here's my gun museum chat. Here's another one. So you can schedule all the shows out like we do now. And then I don't want to click on it because it, I think it'll start the show. But, you know what I mean? If I clicked on this then it would start that interview with Ted Knight. Boom, it all shows, you know, everything would start to happen and this connects with YouTube. And then does that answer the question? Like you create yeah. your shows yep. like we normally do. It's just that what's adding to it now is then there's, you know, oh, I'm also live on Facebook. I'm also live on Twitch. I'm also live on whichever this mixer, I think I set up an account there too. It, it's mixer, I think, seems kind of like Twitch in, in that you can set up a room and then people can browse so i figured why not throw some gun stuff up there but Sorry. anyway so that's the that's as much as i know after one day but like i say for me if i were to click on this i would get a little thing down here that it doesn't show up long enough for me to hardly read but it says something about my processor my, my graphics processor and then it'll but sometimes it'll stay running but if only if I if I didn't like the one time it stayed running for six minutes I didn't know it was running like as soon as I start fiddling with it it shuts down so if like I get it going and then start clicking on stuff I think it glitches and it shuts down the one time I clicked on stuff like this and I didn't realize by clicking it by leaving it on whatever it was it defaults to like stream now I just clicked this button instead of this button and I think it went live and because I was sitting here reading something or setting up the show or something, I didn't realize that it actually had stayed live for a little while. But uh, I think that's why it shows you all this CPU and GPU stuff down here, because uh, I haven't really been paying attention to that. But mine maxes out. I need a new bigger computer for this one to run on. And Do you I, know? Don't, oh, I don't know if OBS is any CPU better. You know, I don't know if it can handle a smaller CPU or not. Yeah. With um with XSplit with the trial version of it, is there enough there that I could actually try doing a live stream on YouTube with it? Oh, I believe so. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, it was just uh, some of the dumb extra stuff, if I remember right, that the uh, paid ones brought in. Oh, okay. Okay. So if I'm going to click on broadcaster and then, oh no, I'll click on. Oh, you know what? I might not be able to because now I'm, I bought it. I'm going to check and see if that's available on Mac too. Oh, I think it is. Yeah, I've got two different computers. I'd like to have one to run on the laptop when I'm on the road and then have one for my, my Windows machine back home. You know what? I don't want to assume that, though, because... Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to it real quick right now. 
whatever I just clicked on there did not seem to say. I think it's. Asked. Let's see here. Here we go. Yeah, it's it's Windows only. Yeah, I was just gonna say it didn't. That's fine. Oh, well, hey, give me an excuse to go buy a new laptop, I guess. Well, <laughs> but if it's gonna be pretty heavy on the uh, the video card stuff, I might be looking at a, a pricey laptop too. Unfortunately. Well, yeah, and that's the thing. Yeah. I don't know if that's and the thing is mainly what it offers is the ability to to broadcast to multiple streams at once. Number one, who knows if that's even necessary? It's probably nice, but you know if it's necessary. But number two, Matt is paying for something already that's like twenty something bucks a month, or he's at nineteen bucks a month that uh, allows him to do that. So this isn't the only option to stream to more than one place. So he uses OBS oh, yeah. and something else that allows him to split. I'm going to be testing out uh, OBS on the Mac tomorrow. I'm going to fiddle around with it and see if I can get it set up and stuff. And other than needing to get a couple extensions, it uh, it doesn't look too difficult to use. I might just try OBS and see how it works because a lot of you guys already know OBS fairly well. So if I can't figure something out, I can always bug somebody to help me with it. But um, I'll primarily be doing it on Windows on my, on my uh, PC back home. But, yeah, when I'm on the road, I'm, I want something I can use also when I'm mobile. Yeah, this is lame. Because I signed into it, I guess, I can't uh, see. Oh, I know. I could, um, I could sign down. Yeah, when I went to it on the Mac through the Mac browser, it's only showing uh, through Windows. Because if I got an Apple machine or whatever, if you got a Mac machine, it'll usually uh, show you the option to download through Mac, Mac OS. No, yeah, exactly. That was yeah. Because as soon as I click on the download, it's got a big Windows sign. You click on the other downloads, and it's a bunch of Windows signs. So yeah. Not even a Mac symbol or not. That's that's fine. That's fine. But I was looking for the thing that would show the differences. I guess it doesn't matter to you at that point now. But uh, yeah. How the hell was I finding that before? I could have sworn I found a thing that showed you like the difference between them. Yeah, oh, they did show. Um, down the bottom right corner there uh, on that previous window, How do you call that? Uh, the main desktop. They it did say show other versions. I guess I don't know. Oh, that might just be older versions of the of the software itself. So, oh, show comparison. This is what we're looking for. Yeah. So for the free version, you get four scenes. So that little thing down there, you only get four of them, but that's enough to play with. Uh, content and games, big deal. Thumbnail preview, big deal. Chroma key, so you could use your green screen. Scene transitions, big deal. Split mode, I don't know. Virtual camera, who cares? So what you don't get is Skype. You don't get audio source, local streaming. I don't know what that means. You don't get simultane simultaneous broadcasting to multiple stream services, so that's a paid thing. Uh, you don't get the uh, source transitions, whatever that is. You don't get a preview editor. Your resolution's a little lower. Your audio's a little lower. But otherwise, uh, yeah, you can upload and share with the recording manual. Uh, you can professional software hardware video encoding integration with youtube and everything is all part of the free uh free updates to the professional video so uh the only thing you don't get is unlimited scenes which is you know which would be nice i don't know if it's worth money uh and then skype so big deal you could really get quite a bit and then they remove watermarks you know so it, yeah well, if, it, if it works with skype you can pull in skype as your sources like if you know everybody gets like if we're all in here on it Skype would, instead of on Hangouts. Up, like a little window instead of that whole like sharing the screen with all the other yeah. crap. Yeah, okay. And that could be a benefit. And I don't know if YouTube... Well, here's the next question. Do you think... How long do you think before Streamer and Tube, I don't know, other ones, will have something that allows these to stream right over to them so that we can use this OBS or XSplit and just go live on GunStreamer? That's a good question, man. I'm going to say next week because I expected this last year. So <laughs> I'm assuming it's on. It's like a surprise unveiling. On Monday. Well, Gunstream will probably do it as soon as Hickok 45 asks for it. Silence. <laughs> oh, come on, you got more subs than, than Hickok 45, don't you, Snob, over there at Gunstreamer? Uh, no, Clover probably no. does. <laughs> Nobody does. He's winning. Oh, here we go. Fact checking. <laughs> ghost, ghost is ghost is the one that has, uh, you know, I don't know, some kind of deal with yeah. the devil over there. He's winning. Hickok already got up the toolbox guy. Uh, Jared did well. You know, Jared did it. 
by kicking butt and doing a thing every day. Hank Strange mm -hmm. pretty much does a show. I don't know if he posts every show, but he posts like highlights over there on a regular basis. I don't know if this guy's ever posted posted a video. I don't know if this guy's ever posted a video. She posts videos all the time. All the time over here. I don't know if this place has ever posted a video since the beginning. She posts videos occasionally. Uh, Ghost does post his videos over here. They batch them, so they'll come over in batches, and that's it. Um, I don't really post that often. I only post the good ones, so I don't have that many good ones. I got the worst hiccups right now. Liberty Doll's doing pretty good. She came out of nowhere. She's right up behind Clover. She's she's Joe Biden in Clover right now. <laughs> she's smelling Clover's hair. Riding on his coattails. <laughs> I'm okay with that, too. <clears throat> There's Travis coming on up. Yeah, man. Right behind Faxon. They're paying people to be here, right? They're a manufacturer, so they've got relationships and stuff that are like, you know, business relationships. So I would think, you know, if anybody's, that's not manipulation or nothing, but like Arrow, you know, they're like in business. You would think they'd be climbing up. So you're kicking butt on them. Uh, Schwell batches. Budget, you know, he kicks butt all the time, constantly putting stuff up, good production. So, yeah, I mean, Hickok is kicking the crap out of everybody. 1700 It's probably because his video's been on the top of the screen for, what, six months? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, like, one three months. Him and his son. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it don't hurt nothing, but it's because it's Hickok. People see that, and they're like, oh, I know that guy. I'll start, yeah. by, I'll start by, you know, subscribing to that guy, and then I'll go see whatever else they make. So somewhere down here, it was like six last time I looked, so it can't be that high. It's eight right now. I'm going to throw the link out here to gear websites. I put gear websites over here. So somebody went over to Gunstreamer and took Every Second Matters. Did you guys notice that? No. Did they spell it the exact same way? It's Yeah. They, I don't know what they're trying to pull or whatever, but if you go to Probably their, Gary. Oh, no, no. It's somebody being weird. Like, not into, just somebody, and they're doing, like, an odd thing. They're not being weird or nothing. I guess you have to type it up here. Oh, no. You know what? It's a separate search here. Can they, uh... So, they, they don't have any branding, and they're posting, like, Insider Blows Whistle at Google. You have the rights. Government has privileges. One to three. So, it's like... You know, it's not like... I don't know what it is. It's weird political stuff. There's only like seven videos or something. Or maybe it's just these four. Maybe it's just these four videos. 25 minutes, nine, nine, and five. So I don't know who it is. And I don't think it doesn't. I mean, that, nothing about this like makes it seem like it's anybody who has any idea what Every Second Matters is, right? Like, this doesn't even seem like anything Every Second Matters. They just accept that they happen to use the exact same name. What was I putting in here? Oh, I was going to drop that thing. Yeah. I was thinking maybe they were like holding on to it to try to sell it to you or try to like hold it hostage or something so you'd have to give something up to get it or, you know. Yeah, that's a bad move because I'll find them at Chat Show and just like grab them and wrestle them and give them oh, yeah. until they give it back to me. You're a pretty uh, big dude, really man. You got a pretty long reach. They can't get very far, so. Not like giving it back as much as just like giving it to me. Give me it. Give me it. Give me it. I'll give them a dog poop or something in return. Yeah, there you go. No, I don't care. I mean, every second matters is a thing, but it's just annoying when they're not doing anything on topic, you know, on point with it or whatever. Anyway, I threw the link out there to gear uh, websites. Because of that, I figured, oh, snap, I better go put gear websites over there. So if somebody puts up some weird gear websites version, <laughs> right? So then I did their import thing, and I think it imported like 3,000 videos or whatever I have over there. So you're welcome. A whole bunch of shitty old videos from back in the day. Every once in a while, one of those would, you know, catch and... Uh, I think gear websites brings in like a hundred bucks a month or something still. So there's still money out there in YouTube. You just have to uh, put 3000 videos up over nine years and wait. You did get another purchase over at the store. Oh, so you yeah. want a patch? Is that, is that what's happening? <laughs> you want to pick a patch? So I don't have, uh, I, you know, nobody had purchased anything all day. So, uh, I'm refreshing over there, but yeah, thanks for that. And, uh, what are you thinking? Uh, I don't have uh, a current patch, as I was going to say, or a current uh, 
any current pictures of the panel, but I can certainly go back to the most recent one. Or did you have something in mind? I, I don't know what you got. Usually I have the illustrious panel pick, but... Um, yeah, I'll go back and uh, try to find that, like, say, most recent pick. Which, granted, has quite a few missing on it by now. I need to go back and... Uh, takes and plus I found a big baggie. I think Mr. Wright had sent me some a long time ago, or else he gave me some at Tulsa a long time ago. And I was digging through stuff and I found them, and I need to put those on. And those are some interesting ones. They're like um, manufacturers and stuff. So, um, did you want to have somebody in particular, or have something in some sort of a range, of color, or something that you're looking for? I, many of the skulls are cool, or I. Clover picked out a cool one last time. He got that dead air. So. Well, I guess you can all help him out. He's looking for a patch. Um, as far as skulls, I guess you could have this immortal school. I don't know what the hell that says. Immortal, S-O-D-L? So this was a Immortal guy. soul. Soul, I guess, O-U-L. Yeah, that makes more sense Thanks. So uh, this is a place called Battle Patches, and they did a uh, they did a one based off of like the peace sign that said uh, something about hippies, and it uh, turned a peace sign a peace sign into a B fifty two. So they kind of incorporated a dead patch, a grateful dead patch, into a uh, like you know how Air Force patches are. They're big ass wing patches are huge, so it kind of made a Air Force wing patch out of a dead patch, and it was kind of neat. So I talked to the guy, and he ended up sending me. Oh, I don't know, dozen or more patches that were kind of all over the place as far as Air Force stuff. Uh, he did a lot of not so much unit patches, but like commemorative unit patches, like you know, like 2009 to 2014. You know, like Operation What the Hell. So um, you know, a lot of commemorative type of patches. So they're really big. There's one here that says Immortal Soul, and it's got sort of like a skull with a inappropriate. Uh, What's the word? It's an uh, Indian headdress. Well, yeah, but that's totally appro what's appropriating. Made, made it's a, American. a skull appropriates a, a, a headdress, which appropriates a bunch of feathers off of birds who appropriate feathers from lit reptiles. So, cultural uh, appropriation. So. <laughs> yeah, super cultural misappropriation with a skull wearing a donning a, a ceremonial headdress, like some sort of a warrior headdress. But anyway, it's a big red patch you know big as big obnoxious air force patch shoulder patch uh anyway that's got a skull on it it's sort of a sideways look of uh the skull wearing a headdress the first one sounds good okay i realize i think you already grabbed most of the skull type of ones off of here so yeah. i'm scrolling through all right so that one sure that's good thanks for the order and uh let's see what he ordered Yep, right on. Thanks. So, um, I'll close out of there, and we'll go see if anybody's saying anything on the gun YouTube side. <laughs> the people watching, and nobody's really saying anything yep. over on the uh, gun channel side. It's like most people have fallen asleep, so we might be getting to the end. But uh, maybe we can chat a little bit off air, unless anybody out there wants to speak up that you want to hear what we're about to talk about. We were talking, oh no, we were going to talk about XSplit, I guess. Um, we weren't going to talk about the other project. But we're still awake. Might be too late. I'm still here. What project? Oh, I was going to say the uh, crowdfunding whole thing. Um, uh, we can. Talking about my my thing. No, no, just the uh, so or just during in general, or I don't, I don't know. You, you kind of, yeah. What are you talking yeah, about? I'm not going to talk about anything. It's anybody's individual projects. But as far as uh, on the um, telethon earlier, uh, after, you know, I, like say, I wanted to play with XSplit a little bit. I saw that we were about to reach the goal. It was like three backers away from reaching the goal. So I went live in the middle of the day, 5th of July. So didn't know if people were going to be around or not. And uh, Tony Simon jumped in. Clover jumped in. Who else jumped in? Other people jumped. A couple other people jumped in. And uh, we ended up chatting a bit uh, about the 
um, project, I guess, a little bit, and then just some other things, Tony's projects and stuff. And mm -hmm. then uh, we reached the goal. So eventually we reached the goal, and we we're no longer in telethon mode. And since there were so many people in that are two-way media, I just turned it into uh, two-way media chat, right? So we chatted a little bit about the idea. Hold on, Travis, if you would. Ah, oh, shit. So maybe there's not as much point to talk about. I was thinking Travis specifically might be uh, worth uh, uh, chatting about that with. But yeah, the idea uh, of um, um, starting a crowdfunding project or some sort of a campaign, doesn't necessarily have to be crowdfunding, just sort of maybe an awareness or a um, motivational type of drive or something maybe to get uh, some sort of sponsorship for activists and to allow people to um, get with industry, gun shops, um, others that are um, doing outreach or doing some sort of, uh, uh, you know, something with the community where they're working with uh, ranges or maybe 4-H or, you know, local police departments, you know, companies so often do things, you know, for the community, quote unquote, like how often do, does, is activism part of that? And uh, anyway, I think we we're thinking about, you know, the, the difficulties of certain individuals trying to get to stuff like a gun rights policy conference, which has almost no um, potential to make money, really. At least we haven't seen anybody who's ever been able to make money going to gun rights policy conference <laughs> right. as far as making content that's appealing or interesting to enough people to bring in income. Um, but we have heard of people who have gone to gun rights policy as a representative or in association with and gotten their, maybe their airfare paid for or, you know, I don't want to say all expense paid, but, you know, basically helped to where they can, t you know, actually attend without having to, you know, get in trouble with a spouse or lose a job or something. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I guess we were talking about that. And, I don't know, Patriot and Snob and Gizzard, honestly, I don't remember who all was in some of these discussions. So if we're repeating ourselves and there's no need in the middle of the night on a Friday to do it, we don't have to. But uh, I was kind of curious if, Tra if Travis was around to uh, get his input because he's yeah. worked with, uh, with shops and stuff. But... Um, Anyway, we can spend that one as long as we want, and uh, what do you think? There we go, dead air. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, we've already discussed it. No, I think, I think so. <laughs> I mean, that was... That. If you guys haven't, or you don't want to, then... I guess right. I mean, that was my, that was my concern. <clears throat> I mean, when I talked about this on the uh, Minuteman 2A thing, uh, I don't think I talked about it in the room, but that was my concern with you know, frustration, I guess, with going, you know, looking in, I wanted to go to GRPC, but the more I dived into it and asked folks and this, that, and the other, it's like, oh, I can't afford it, and this doesn't fit, and all this other stuff, and blah, 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 and it seemed like nobody was, you know, wanting to go, and I'm thinking, well, you know, yeah, I mean, not just for myself to, you know, find a way, because I've got that issue, too. It's You're absolutely right. It's not where you're, you're not producing glamorous catch a lot of you content really uh from there so you know it's one of them things where you know being able to do any type of revenue generation off of it is going to be is going to be slim it's not going to really going to yield product to review so you're not even getting you know trinkets out of the you know out of the deal so you know what you know what does one do right um Oh yeah, and you're talking like swag or whatever. Like you're buying that. Like there's no such thing as. Let I me mean, you get a free sticker or something. But if you want like a bunch of patches from Second Amendment, what kind of jerk is gonna just take a bunch of free patches? Like they don't even. Well, they're not free. They cost five bucks or whatever. But uh, you know, you're not trying to take free stuff from these organizations. You want to make sure that they're funded, right? Mm -hmm. We're trying to spread the word, not. Yeah, not absolutely. Mm -hmm. And they don't have fun, you know, manufacturer who makes a profit spends some of that on marketing materials. That's What's part of the game, right? Like that's yeah, give me a stack of patches and I'll help you get the word out on these. I'll I'll pass them out and give them to people and stuff. It's mm -hmm. all great. But yeah, Second Amendment Foundation, you're buying them. Gun, uh, Gun Owners America, you're buying we're buying them, right? Mm -hmm. See, I would I would be very interested in going just for obviously the reasons that you go there is obviously get the information and better ideas. 
You know, so I would be very interested in going. Yeah. Cool. Mine's a little little different, obviously. I I've got you know more of the transportation to and from and around that you know most people don't, but it is possible. Yeah. Well, what's his name was there last year and his friend. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Patriot so, knows him, Carrie. right? Right. I mean, all blind people have to know each other, right? Yes, and, I do know him. I, yeah. I, kind of. He, oh, do you really? I was just, I was just joking. No, he's kind of mad because people ask him if he's Patriot in the dark. Well, he gets really <laughs> upset about it. And but, but he's think. he's actually you know he's got a lot of information. He's been doing it for years. Um, he was actually in a movie. So I don't know if anybody knows that, but he was kind of blindsided in uh, Bowling for Columbine because they were like, oh, look at this. This is a blind guy, and he can, you know, they kind of used it against him or whatever, but they, he's a really uh -huh. cool guy. All right. Cool. Well, I mean, I was just saying that they had, like, accommodation or whatever. The guy, they had, like, a bus, and then this guy was helping him out, and basically they, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's basically, I, I would have to have a, uh, I, really, I don't. I mean, there's nothing more, I mean, anything that, you know, I do, I have my accommodations of what I do, so it's just setting it up. It's a little bit more, more in-depth for me, but that I'm used to it, so. All right, just just get somebody to rent you a car and just drive down there. Yeah, it's cheaper. Yeah. I actually, I I said I would, I'd love to meet up with with uh, G and throw him some gas money, but then he got mad at me. So last time I mentioned it, so I'm not going to mention it because he said it's not a hangout. But he didn't get that. I was just asking for a ride. You know, I pay him to drive. <laughs> Yeah, you did. <laughs> Dead. Yeah, that was that was back when when Jimmy was still on. So it was it was a yeah, that was a while ago. All right. Well, so anything else about I don't know the concept of I don't know I don't know, trash it out in the middle of a Friday or whatever. Anybody got any plans for the weekend? Oh, you I, know what? Go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I have a lot of cleaning up to do, because I did go to the range today, and I was so happy. It was way too hot, but I I got blisters and everything, and it, uh, I couldn't be happier. I am uh, one local gun shop. Always fun. I'm going to the lake all day tomorrow, and then coming home Saturday and shooting videos with these two new guns. Wait. All day tomorrow is Saturday, isn't it? Sunday, sorry. Wrong day. Okay. Yeah, tomorrow and then Sunday, yeah. Wait, I'm all confused. Being off work just totally confused me. Technically, today is Saturday. Uh-oh. Oh, don't scare me. I usually have to, after this show, I usually go check my bank and make sure that there's not, like, you know, zero in one of the accounts so that the first $3 interest thing that comes by costs me $38. But I still got an hour. Um, anybody else doing anything this weekend? Anybody is uh, doing a show tomorrow? I haven't heard anything. He's doing a show tomorrow. I will not have a show tomorrow, by the way. I know that. Oh, no. And Rick, I don't believe Rick's having his show this week. It does that every other Saturday. Yeah, true. So, yeah, it'll be a dead day tomorrow. So if you're interested in starting a show, doing a show, participating, trying to launch something on OBS, trying to launch something on okay, okay, XSplit, X Split, then uh, give it a shot. Uh, there's usually going to be people around, especially when there's normally a show on. There'll probably be some people sitting around waiting. So uh, you probably have a ready-made audience if that's something you're interested in trying out. If you need any help with it, um, probably be more than likely there'll be some people available on the AM to help you out with that, or jump into the after chat when we're off air here. 
or when we go off air, we'll usually drop the link on the Gun Channel site to jump in and join the after chat, which is the continuation of this room, this hangout room. Once it's not live anymore, it still exists. Uh, so everybody usually hangs out. It'll still only hold 10 people, but very rarely, well, the last couple of nights, actually, the rooms have been full. But very rarely do the rooms get so full that you know, somebody can't just jump in to listen. And uh, we'll put the link out there. So if you have questions about how to start a show or any of the questions about doing it, feel free to jump into one of these off airs or one of the live chats that goes on. Now, yesterday, Dead Horse opened up a lobby. He opened tw two of them up today, but uh, he's no longer got a live one going. So uh, I'm guessing it'll probably just be off air after the show tonight. And then uh, we'll see, I guess, the uh, snob show in the evening. I might or may not jump on and do a, a 2A media workshop. If anybody has any specific questions about 2A stuff, let me know. and That can help influence whether or not we do it. Uh, will we be in Tulsa in November? That's a good question. I don't have any schedule. I don't have any travel scheduled because I don't consider Phoenix sketch, you know, trip. That's just going to Phoenix. It's like an hour away, two hours away for me. So um, uh, that's the only thing I'm doing this year is going to gun rights policy, and then go into uh, the big gun show later on in the year. Uh, and maybe that's yeah, about it, really. I'm looking more to try to get people organized for stuff. So Tulsa is in November. Um, I plan on traveling next year. I don't know if next year will start in September of this year or if it'll start in January, you know. Kind of depends on funding, I suppose, like everything. But uh, as we talked about, we're always interested in trying to figure out new ways to fund projects and adventures. So uh, there's lots of money. The most expensive, most, uh, what are we, the richest country? Or at least one of the, could be the top richest, if we're not the richest. Well, as but far as the people wealthy, go. As far as or, wealth. Yeah. And at least spending and stuff. So we'll figure out a way to, uh, as capitalists, get rid of the funding issue and do more of the planning fan adventures and then yeah the idea would be to go to Tulsa with uh, the Gun Channels group in uh, November and in April. Now in November it's a little colder so maybe we start doing the tours and museums when it's colder and we start doing the uh, shoots in the summer when it's nicer. Is that a smarter way to do the meetups? There's also potential of uh, everybody's been doing houses lately. So, oh wait, did you guys already do a house in Tulsa? And I'm not aware of it. Uh, no, we've everybody, never done a. House everybody in did hotels last time, still, right, in Tulsa. Yeah. So it's potential that that'll be a whole other thing is starting up doing some kind of house in Tulsa, um, or we just we could send snobs. The snobs, we could send them one of these, like, you want a free trip to Branson. All right. They'll drive to Branson, and they'll come home, and we'll be in their house. And then what are they going to do? Crashed at their house. Yeah, right, right. Squatter's rights, man. Squatter's rights. Mm -hmm. yeah, hold on. Just, oh, just pet the dogs thing. when you get here. They're kind of annoying if you don't. Yeah, we'll pet them dogs. We'll pet bellies. Right. But no, I have no idea. Uh, I'm not, I don't have anything in the budget to travel at all, really. Um... So I, I, that's also beyond the gun rights policy. I'm really trying to figure out how to get people to the gun rights policy so that they're shaking hands. And remember last year at the gun rights policy, the AMCON, without even kidding around, without trying to shock and awe, without trying to be snarky, there was a question that came up in the discussion. Do you mean, or I think it was something like, do you mean people watch videos from their phones or like something like people really watch videos from their phones like that was an adult human being in 2018 in Chicago somebody who figured out how to get themselves to Chicago in 2018 asked a whole bunch of other adults in a room focused on two-way media like you can watch videos on a phone like people do that so you know what I'm saying like that was enough for me to realize that we have people that have done tremendous stuff, accomplished much, but imagine how much more they could accomplish with Snob and his skill set, or Patriot's uh, skill set, and I, you know, Gizzard's uh, ambition and, and abilities, or Clover's, uh, you know, 
skill sets. So, and that's just the four people in this room. Think about all the people we don't know. Think about Tony Simon being in the room to motivate some of these people. Uh, unfortunately, the AMCON was a carbon copy from the first year. It was the first year in, in Dallas and the second year in Chicago. If I played both of them on audio, you'd almost think they were the same things. They were so similar. One of the things that they wasted our time with, and I'll say wasted our time with because I don't care. They aren't listening to this is uh what's his face telling us about how we can't publish the way he did and there's no point doing what he did because he was so brilliant and we can't do it that way who the hell wants to hear that shit, right so i'm hoping that uh you know after having lived through that and knowing that we're going into the cycle of 2020 i want to spend my time instead of worrying about traveling and doing anything like tulsa i want to try to figure out how to literally get people in that room as effective as fucking possible so that those gun owners rights groups that are there know that they have an effective useful arsenal I'm not even you know not even a pun like we need to be militarized and or at least military precision and and an ability to work together right and you don't have to love everybody trust me people in the army don't like each other i'm sure there's marines that couldn't stand each other they can all march perfectly and they're all going to wear uniforms and march perfectly when needed they'll all fight and kill in harmony right you're going to mm -hmm. save that guy you're going to drag that guy back and you're still going to hate that fucking jerk because he's a dick he didn't like what you did to his sister or something but he's on our side right. and uh we got to get past that so there's people that are resisting it and there's people that are oblivious to it but there's others that ain't and that's where I'm spending my time and everything, and all my attention on. Because what the hell? We only have so much time, right? And then we're old and we're useless and our skill sets are wasted. So yep. I'm going to spend mine on 2020 election and getting people past the petty bullshit and the oblivious drifting that they've been doing for years. And, you know, and hopefully in an effective way give them something it's an alternative hey imagine a world where we all work together imagine what would happen when political strategists are scared of us you know, can't even imagine right. yep but i like thinking about it so anyway um appreciate everybody joining us tonight there's a little bit of chatting about the future and thanks for that uh chatting about whether or not we're going to tulsa i imagine the rest of you are going to tulsa though we know snob will be there living right down the street um, Patriot, you ever thinking about going to Tulsa? Ooh, I would have to have a, a really good sighted guide that knows what he's doing, because I the, just the things I would look for. You know, the people I know that would travel down there, they don't, they wouldn't know. Um, what cycle, cycle camp. yeah, yeah, cycle <laughs> camp, and cycle would love to do it for you. I honestly. bet you he I would. Bet. I, I bet you would. Yep. I might. I might. Uh, yep. And he drives some of the time, so he could probably even, you know, not be <laughs> too far out of the way if you could meet him part of the way. Right. That's, no, he's in Detroit, dude, right? So that's not even out yeah. of the way. No, yeah. I mean, it's I'm not that far out of his way, way. Yeah. yeah. No, that's not even out of the way. I mean, that's kind of like a different direction, but from where he's coming, that's just coming, you know, east faster than he might. But it's still not, it's hardly out of the way, yeah. And he would totally, he likes just driving straight through. He wouldn't care. Yeah, and he'd like to have the company, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's already done deal. It's done. Oh, it, I guess I'm there. Somebody <laughs> remember to tell Cycle he's doing it. Yeah. <laughs> right. All right. Cycle, you're babysitting Patriot for a weekend, by the way. Pick him up at 9 o'clock. Right. But really, the trick is that because he flew, I think, the last time, right? So the trick would be to get him to drive again. Uh, he drove the last time, didn't he? Because he flew the time before, but his brother came this time and they drove again, didn't they? Oh, so you guys haven't gone for a while, so I guess uh, I might be... Brother-in-law or whatever? Uh, I'm mixing them up, I suppose. I'm pretty sure, because he was in his van, I thought, this last time. Yeah, it was Wasn't the he? time before that nah, he flew, and the... he, bought the, he bought the cases and stuff to fly back with the rifles, but that was the early one. That, that was the enough. fall that he bought the cases. Okay. And then yeah. the next one after that was, I, I think he drove. Mm -hmm. Right. So I like going there in November, personally. It's nicer, snowy, right? I like it better. But uh, content-wise, I think if you know if you're looking for content, content-wise, I think November's better. Yeah, I was gonna say different show, and I don't know lots of reasons for it, like Christmas, hunting season, weather. And I've talked to who did I talk to the other day? Oh, 
Um, I've talked to multiple people about making the show, and when I was at NRA um, talking with Walther, believe it or not, Walther is even thinking about setting up at Tulsa Arms Show. You know, they're really close, too, so that would be smart for them. Which is interesting. They're, yeah, they're talking about getting with, um, you know, getting their booth and doing all of their stuff like their, like their booth, of course, but then a scaled-down version and then having an actual authorized dealer in the area there. You know what I'm saying? But it be their booth and actually have some of their representatives there to talk about the stuff. I was like, hmm, that's interesting. So it turns out the analyst is, is scared of snow. <laughs> well, it could snow in April just as easy as it could snow, yeah. it's, it's snow no. in November. So. No way. Oh, yeah. We can usually get more yeah. snow mid to, into March than we do in November. G-Webs knows. He was there when it snowed. I've been there. But I, I'm not an expert or nothing. I just think it would snow more in November than in April. I mean, not, not we very not. rarely get snow till the first of the year. Very yeah. rarely. All right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we're the same way. It snowed many a time in April down here. So, so if you're real hardcore, you just go to Tulsa anyway. And if you need a coat, there's a really cool surplus store. Or you really <laughs> gamble and go to that guy in the north uh, east corner and buy a jacket super cheap at the store at the show right. yeah and you don't need a jacket in the show that's way too big a place with way too many human beings it's warm in there yeah it can be 20 below outside and it'll be warm inside yeah i mean you might want like a windbreaker inside but you don't need no jacket like it's not cold windbreaker oh yeah i mean just a little jacket or something because if you walk near a door or something it, like he says if it's super cold outside you don't you'll remember it's cold outside but not gonna be cold in there. So look at all the restaurants, even you know, it's almost it's got to be a bit of a heater with those restaurants kicking out heat right in the middle on both sides. Yeah, except for the Mexican ones, and there's not enough people in there because they all suck. So <laughs> no, I'm they don't, they don't worry about it. Actual, I'm talking about inside the actual building. <laughs> no, yeah, I got. It. You were talking about Walther going. That looks like a genius plan. If they set up where you could try their gun, you know, like they do it in our air shot. Just a smaller version, and then have a dealer sitting right next to him. You get over there, you try the triggers, do whatever you want, be able to work oh, them, all that, right. and then you walk right over there and buy one while it's on your mind. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, so many potentials. So many potentials. But uh, first, we need to have the right, or at least to uh, secure the right from the uh, attackers, right? And uh, that I don't think needs ultimate attention. We just need to get used to it. You know, we don't spend all summer mowing lawn. We get into a routine, right? Or you people do. I don't do that anymore. But, you know, when you're doing lawn maintenance, you don't do it. I mean, some people are fanatics and go at it every weekend. But most people figure out some way to batch it when appropriate. Hire a kid to do it or something or a service to come by. And uh, we just need to figure out how to do that, right, as a community. You know, figure out, like, the resolve to... Uh, be aware of this stuff and get it on people's minds and I don't know if it takes showing successes or if it just uh, I don't know we'll figure it out right so I want to do it tonight we'll do it eventually mm -hmm. all right well so we're gonna end if we don't set the button so I'm just gonna hit this button again. Right. <laughs>